Hey. And we're working on YouTube now too. All right, guys. Yahoo, Prof here. And uh, you can't see it because off to the left there, if you see look over there, that's the laptop. We're actually on the Razer webcam right now. Finally got a new one. The last one literally shit the bed. Uh, to be truthful, I think something was always wrong with it. Um, because I could never update the firmware. Razer was sadly of little help with that. And by the time it took crap out, uh, it was... I mean, it made it long enough it was beyond the warranty, and I think even beyond the extended warranty. I do need to figure out a better mic thing, maybe like a, you know, because the uh, Yeti Pro is all the way, it's like two arm lengths away, much farther away than I normally would be from the desk, uh, which we got right here for Pokemon Pulls. This is my second workbench. There's the lappy top, and there we go. So first off, I'm happy to be back. We're back up and running, and if you notice, we are back on uh, the Prophecist. Everything now is going to be branded the Prophecist. We're keeping it KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Kept trying to make things that... Um... Yeah, so if you notice, like, sub-numbers have dropped and stuff like that, that's probably because of rebranding the channel. We will have a... Um channel video what do you call it like a teaser or a trailer video coming out soon a little little explanation on you know why we change and everything so or if you guys were here for the night that i decided to do that um basically everybody knows me um and they come here for my stuff originally we were trying to make the channel and then the website that no longer exists as more of a place for other people to post and i want to say for the first year year and a half it was but then after that, it was really only ever my content, and then maybe some other people would show up. So, and realistically, um, I don't want to say other people aren't, like, recognizable or whatever, but all my stuff comes from, nowadays probably Twitter, in the past multiple forums. Um, now I just irregularly post if there's a topic that interests me and stuff like that. So before we get going, um, I'm going to crack open this bubbler. Uh, now, for those of you who have watched, especially this channel before, my personal one, I'm a bit clumsy. So yeah, that, that dropped directly on the floor. Let's hope it doesn't explode on me. So it's pretty good. It is a uh, pomegranate. I can't read backwards. Pomegranate Akai refresher. That makes sense because I like that the the triple X of vitamin water makes sense. I would like this then. Um, similar things in there. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm using the Razer Cam for this view for the moment, uh, that is because the laptop camera is potato. Um. For example, that is what the laptop camera looks like. And they're roughly the... Eh, laptop camera's a little bit further away, but not really. And the Razer Rogue Cam is very wide. So, I don't know. I think I'm becoming a plaid shirt guy, too. This thing's been, uh, been really, really nice. Yeah, so followers, especially on Twitch, took a dip. Happened when we made Prof's Pokemon polls as well. If you're wondering why I pulled that away, that was because I was basically only posting Pokemon content and the channel was basically becoming a Pokemon channel. But realistically, this channel is it's about me. So it's about whatever I'm into. So if I'm into Pokemon, the channel's going to be into Pokemon. You know? So, what do we got first? Um... We need to open up this first. We're doing unboxings today. So, you might be asking what this is. Um, 
Well, we're going to use it to open up the other things. So that should tell you what it is. Right here. This That'll probably give you a hint, too, of what's in here. I don't do much keyboard stuff now, but that was, in the past, one of my main hobbies. But because a lot of you are like, how, even Jared has gotten this before. How can you be an everything enthusiast? Well, I get into a hobby enough so that the hobby does something for me. Like, why I got into mechanical keyboards was because I, I had my um, SteelSeries 7G and I wore through the keycaps because those keycaps were known to be complete garbage. And I was like, well, if you can replace the keycaps, why can't you get better ones? You know what I mean? And that's how my keyboard hobby started. But now I've really determined what I like. Um, and especially for a while there, there was a big lull and like, it got commoditized. You know what I mean? Once, once they hit the gaming scene, it, in my opinion, it's really gone downhill from there. Now if you look at the community though, it's crazy. There's like almost too many options. Um, like when I was there, you could literally try everything, especially if you were willing to go used and, um, do some trading and stuff like that. Uh, like realistically, I, I and most people would only end, ever end up with maybe, I mean, I ended up with a couple collectible boards, but you could very easily buy used, sell used, and just lose shipping if you did it correctly. Um, and I was doing it correctly enough that I was even making money on it, like on the flipping of stuff. So we're going back this way. Oh, we should show you. This is the Razor webcam. Uh, you can't see what mount is on the back here, but, uh, yeah. So how this is working is it is going under the table like it always used to. But if you see, there's this snake you got to wrangle now. Because it is type A to this. This is actually a Best Buy Insignia USB 3.0 extension. This thing is as thick as, an, as a, like a, a really good HDMI cable or display port cable. It's like wrangling a snake under here. But this thing's 12 foot, right? And the cable from the camera, I want to say, is three or four foot, and it works great. We're into the Type A port. We were trying to go to the Type C because I didn't like a 16 or 18 foot Oculus cable. I really think this Kio Pro that we're filming on right now is not actually Type C. Like it has a Type C port, but companies have been pulling that shit. Like where it's like, yeah, it's got a Type C port, but it ships. If you look at the Kio Pro, it ships with a Type A to see cable and I tried the brand new one and this one I was able to update the firmware on it um even with the latest firmware it cannot use a c2c cable um if I use a c2c I have to put a type a adapter on there so that's what's pointing to me that it, it's not actually a true type c like they're using the connector but it's not using the standard of USB-C. um and then uh I couldn't get it to use the long cable, period. The other one was using it for a while. Uh, this one won't, but I if I use the Type A, this just behemoth, if you're running USB 3.0, has a max length of, let's say, 9 feet. I think it's actually 3 meters, so just under 10 feet. Um, so, like, what we're doing right now should not work. If I have a 3 to 4 foot razor cable, that is beefy, crazy beefy, too. And then I'm going into a 12-foot USB 3.0 extension. We should be well beyond the limits. But with that Insignia cable, because it's so overbuilt, like, seriously, buy that one. It, it's it's a bunch. It's actually not that expensive. Um, and sometimes Best Buy has that, where, like, their name brand stuff is actually really, really good. Because they just buy it from whoever is cheapest that can fulfill what they want. If that ends up being, like, a good product, hey, benefit, bonus. Um, just like with their their studio monitor, or they're called bookshelf speakers, Insignia Bluetooth bookshelf Oh, God, the tearing is not working. I didn't want to have to resort to a knife. Uh, but, you know, we were talking about Best Buy. So here's my, my one, I, one I bought when I was in Geek Squad. So Geek Squad knife. Look at, look at how clean that cut that. All right. Alright, 
And you're like, well, why are you open this one first? You said it's related to opening everything else. It is. It is indeed. So what this is, is uh, this is a normal knife. Normally I get ones like, you know, here's my Tuck XL. That takes a standard utility blade. I think they call it like Stanley utility blades or whatever, but you know, just the standard, you know, ones like, like that. Um, because I cut a lot of cardboard, I open a lot of packages and sharpening knives is a pain in the old, you know, hoo-ha. So, um, yeah, so I always use these and I've used these for, I don't know, since I was in high school, over 15 years ago now. Um, what I first used was, this is actually the, um, EAB Lite. This is the successor. This one, as you can see, it was heavily used because there's a mark there. I actually carried this. I think that would rub against something because it's got the, this is either a money clip or a belt clip. And this would just rub on something regularly right there. I don't remember exactly what. Maybe my seat, my, um, I don't want to call it, uh, like seat belt clip thing. Because I would always have it on sort of like my hip, slightly back on the right side. Um, but yeah, so this is not the first one. The original EABA, Exchange a Blade, is what that stands for. It's actually still in my car. Um, bought that at Walmart while I was working there. It was like 10 bucks back then. Um, then I later bought the light version because... Um, something had happened to my EAB. Turns out Gerber fixed it and replaced it and sent it back because they have very good warranty. Um, and they even sent me more of these screws because I lose those. That's the one downside of the EAB. Um, but I ran this for, for a long, long, these for a long time. Um, and then I found the Tuck XL thanks to Charger, um, who I met. I think I met him on Linus Tech Tips for him, but he actually, we already knew each other from Geeks, or Geek Hack, unknowingly. So, and he's why I got into the Tuck XL. I actually have my original Tuck XL. And this one's going to get retired because, here it is, it's a blackened copper. If you noticed, it's basically just copper nowadays. That's what color it used to be, is that right there. It says fail to connect to stream. Thought we're streaming. Seems like we're streaming. Um, but yeah, and I actually had it apart because it was like getting sticky. And sometimes it doesn't always... There you go. See, the blade isn't all the way out. Um, the actual tooth that catches this, since I've had it, I don't know, over five years now, I want to say. But this is copper, and your blades in here are steel. Right, these are steel blades, and this little part is where it, it notches in on one of those. Um, it's just worn out the little peg in here, and uh, you can even see like this blue that used to be blue, anodized titanium blue. Like you can kind of see the see how that's worn out too. But if you look through here, you can see it's very. You see the hints there. It's very blue. That's what color it's supposed to be. I want to say this is probably the second clip it's had. Um, this one has not had to been bent back because sometimes I would get the, until I figured out exactly where I liked carrying the tuck, uh, I would get caught and then this is titanium. So once you bend it too far, uh, well, it stays bent and you gotta bend it back. So you can see a very, it'll show like a very, like very big bend right there if that's the case. Um, but this is going to get re retired because I am finally getting a new copper one. Uh, the new owners are making one. It's actually going to have, I think I got the one with the carbon fiber back, which would be kind of cool. I, I did not get the new knife they have because it was a grand, a thousand dollars for a utility knife. Uh, most times this one still works. You can also see it's very loose. So, but yeah, in all that time, I I think I bought one knife knife. No, I got one kni knife and I uh, ended up getting it repaired. Like I had to get it repaired because I lent it to somebody and they fucked up the blade. Uh, it was SOG. 
and uh, I have it upstairs in case I would I would only go like if I go camping I'll bring that one because it's you know nice uh, blades about that long uh, it's nice thick blade um, this is uh, the first real knife knife I bought in a row so it's a real steel um, from knife center exclusive one I saw this on an EDC post for. Uh, not tactile keychains, I don't think. I think it was not tactile turn, that's the pens. Oh, TI2 design, I believe, is from where this... Somebody posted an EDC with a TI2 design, and this this uh, knife was in there. So it's the G-Slip, and this is the Macar Macarta? Um, it, it just looks too, too nice, basically. Um... I've had this on my list of things to get for over a year, and that probably two years or more now. I got a little uh, blowout design of assembly, which is kind of cool. Liner lock, button lock. Uh, here's the downside of this one, though. There is no lock. But you'll see when you when we get it open here why, kind of. I'm fine with that. It's a deep pocket carry knife. G-slip compact. You might be able to see right there. I saw this immediately. I'm like, oh, it looks like a freaking steak knife is what it reminds me of. And this is the kind of blade that I like to carry. Either I want a short and fat one or a long and skinny one. Uh, I always like the Leek. forget who makes it, but the Leek was a... Um, um, uh, I like that one. So I get a little... Oh, it's wrapped in a microfiber. Interesting. This is... I think it's bigger and heavier than I thought it would be. This used to also... Um, not too many years ago, would not be legal in my state. Um, because any carrying anything over three inches... Like, three inches was too long. That's why, you'll, if you're running, you'll see a lot of EDC knives at 2.9 inches. Yeah, this is way bigger than I thought it would be. I was thinking it would be like maybe not half this width, but based on the pictures, I don't know if you can see where it curves here and there. I thought it would only be this middle part here, like really skinny. Oh, this is way bigger than I thought. This is like a big steak knife. I feel like the pictures don't don't show it properly. Oh, I think it's still beautiful. Now, here's the one thing. This is kind of why it's called a G-slip. Um, there's no lock at all. So you can just bend it. So realistically, you see my hands right here. You don't want to be doing that. However, that is why they put a lock right there. It will stop. So what you can do is go like this, and then go like that. Let's see. Oh, actually, that length. Perfect. I thought the blade was actually going to be skinnier, too. Like, like that much, essentially. Just looked really skinny and long. I'll have to link the... One thing that I think will be really nice is this just raw bear micarta, or micarta, whatever it's called. Um, supposedly, when you once your oils get in it, it will. Um, I want to say like weather, uh, not age too. That's not right. I'm trying to think of the term here. Well, it's very well weighted, I think. So it's a VG10 blade, but it's made in China. Some of the, there are some knife guys in the in the anime club from Linus Tech Tips, and uh, they were saying watch out for it. Um, I this is not like if I'm going to carry a real blade, and I don't use the SOG one, which is more of like a. I, I think it's shorter actually. It's probably about that long, but it's much thicker, much more beefy. Um, it has like a rope notch in it. It's a different type of knife. Um, yeah, I'd be more worried about a blade like that. But this thing just... 
Like I said, I saw it in a picture. I'm like, that thing looks amazing. It looks like a steak knife. I don't know what it is about it, but like I said, I normally use... Oh, that, that stop. Right there is... Per like, I mean, that's not... Some people are like, why isn't it like 90 degrees or 45 degrees? Um, I actually... Because 45 would be here and 90 would be there. I think it's perfectly fine. Um, it really does help opening and closing it, though. See that? It is much bigger than what I thought it was based on the picture. The box made it feel pretty heavy, too. But I think it's still, it looks freaking beautiful. Here, put it next to this guy. Like, they look at home together, don't they? Like it's got a real natural vibe to it. A lot of my old knives are actually from my grandpa on my dad's side. And they still have, like, wood handles. Like, have you ever seen, like, the brass on both ends with the wood in between? A lot of them are that style. I even got some, like, big, big boys. Like, where the blade's that long, that flip out. Those do lock. That would be a definite improvement instead of having this lanyard loop here. Is you have the ones that you press. I know it's much, much less common now because they'll do a liner lock. But they have the ones that, that lock back here. Press that in. Um, that'd be a nice addition to this. But like. As long as it here. Another way to do it is make sure your fingies aren't in the way. And you can go click, click. That's how I would do it if you're doing it that way. Or if you do it this way, keep your fingies out of the way though, because it doesn't have a lock there. This thing's beautiful. It's, it's very sharp. Um, if you guys are wondering, the main reason why I stopped though with this and went to the year is because, like I was saying, I opened a lot of packaging cardboard. Cardboard will destroy this blade. <laughs> As in, you're going to have to sharpen it a lot. Um, this is made to be used and thrown down. In my opinion, unless you're doing a lot of prying or weird shit, buy the carbide blades. At least buy the high carbon steel blades, but I even prefer the hardness of the carbide. It lasts even longer. Now, if you're doing a lot of weird shit, which I don't think you would do with a blade this, sh like, see, the knife is this short. You might do it with, like, a much, like, imagine this is attached to here. Like, a much longer utility knife. You might be doing prying or scraping. Then, the standard ones are better. They're cheaper. You're going to mess with them anyway. But they don't chip. This carbide and the high carbon steel, like if you get like an Olsa, I think it is. Or Olfa. Let's look here. Uh, it doesn't, it's not, I might have broken off the piece that says that already. Olfa or Olsa, I'm trying to remember. Hit, it, hit me down in the comments if, uh, or in the, in the chat if you know which brand I'm talking about for the high carbon steel blades. Um, Yeah, this thing's fucking beautiful. It's much bigger than I thought it would be. And the pictures, like I said, it looked much skinnier, like, like there. It's not a bad thing, per se. To be truthful, there are other colors. Like, after I saw this color, just, I, I really like this style of knife, period. So I will probably, as the next, oh, they actually have, like, a little, like, thingy here, too, where it kind of goes in. Um... The next color I really like is actually currently out of stock as well. Uh, we'll see how this one goes, but there's a decent chance that once that's in the stock, I'll pick up that color too. And they have like a glow in the dark one. They had a they had a nice one that's like fluorescent orange, like safety orange, but with a black blade. Oh, this is definitely, in my opinion, more of an EDC knife. Um, if you want that instead of here, but. Uh, yeah. I'll have to take some pretty pictures of this. But before that... Huh, real steel. We got a little microfiber. We'll be using this. Not this. This guy. To open up all the rest of the stuff. Get 
myself a drinky drink. Turn the laptop cam back on because I totally forgot about that. <sighs> I still need to make an arm for this thing. I have all the parts except the clamp. Oh yeah, even just having a little bit of a wet finger in this micarta makes it like a little... I almost wish they would have rounded the edges more. I don't know if that's possible with like the fibrous micarta. That's the only thing, guys, if you're opening like a lot of tape, that'll really get the blade gummed up. Clean it off. That'll that'll help a whole bunch. Um, and sharpen it. Uh, I think this is just a singular... Yeah, it's not like double beveled. I've definitely had to... Well, it, I mean, obviously there's a general bevel from here to there, right? But then there's literally just one at the end. The only time you'd have to redo this is once you get very far in. Like, if you look here, right? Eventually, once you sharpen these, the blade gets much wider. Um, so then you actually have to re redo it. And I, when I used um, proper, prop, we call them proper knives, um, I would use them that much, or the ones from my grandpa were used that much. So I would, you would have to do the two-step, like, like, you know, sharpen it down skinnier, then sharpen it sharp. You can probably tell by that, this bubbler doesn't stand You can probably tell by the tape that this is keyboard stuff, mechanicalkeyboards.com. Highly recommend them. Oh, baby. Okay, this was signed of something I bought extra. But I think it's really cool. freaking hour into this half hour okay took me a little bit longer to get started than I would have liked All right, so we're going to look at these second, but these are, both of these are traitors. This is heavy, like this. Oh, King Arthur's here. Hey, King Arthur. What's up? Oh, you want attention. He wants snuggles, guys. Yeah. You want snuggles, don't you? Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm sorry, but King's gonna win out here. And I think you would agree. Yeah, King Arthur, how are you? He'll just show up from time to time like this and just demand attention. I could be like, hey, I don't care what you're doing. I know you're just picking up that keyboard thing, but you're giving me pets. And he just purrs like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to lick? 
check me out. And when he's really happy, he licks your face. Because he feels like he's cleaning you. Probably like he would clean another kitty cat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You a long boy? Yeah, you guys, you tell the guys in the stream. You're a long boy. Sorry if you get cat butt. I have no control over that. Okay, I got no control over cat butt. Comfortable, yeah. What's up? Yeah. Are you a happy guy? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes he'll just lay on your chest like this. He just wants the pets. Because he's handsome. Right, dude? Yeah, it's going to lay all the way on your chest. He is definitely a cat, though, that... No, you can't. You. That's my... He's trying to take the button off my shirt. Hey. Hey. No, 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 no. Who said you could do that? That's a button. He's also a cat that, um, if he, he'll continue to go at that button until it's removed from your shirt, if, if, uh, if that's what he pleases. Yet, yeah, no, you cannot take the button. You can't just pull off the button, my dude. Yeah. No, no, no. What's up? Oh, he's comfortable, huh? Yeah. You're getting cat hair all over the camera. <sighs> Is this just cat cam now, guys? Yeah, what's up? Oh, yeah. Scratches in the head. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, he just shows up like this every now and then. Like, he'll be in the middle of doing something. He doesn't care. And he just, you saw, he hopped right on the desk, and he's like, Oh, the camera's in the way. I'm going straight through the camera, and I'm going on you. <laughs> and you're giving me attention. Hey, dude. Can we make more video now? Are you done? Thank you. Oh, now I'm completely full. Just can't care. Oh, now he's going to. He found the bubbler. Yeah, did you find the bubbler? Oh, that's my glasses, dude. Pluh. <sighs> He is shedding. Quite a lot. Yeah, are you shedding quite a lot? Starting to go into, you know, fall now, so. <laughs> I don't know if he's getting his winter coat or what's going on there because uh, <clears throat> he is shedding a lot. This will be his first winter with us. Yeah, okay. Alright. So, this is something I bought additionally because I couldn't pass up the space bar. The keycaps are... Mm, meh. Space bar. Amazing. These traders, key, these traders sets are actually not that expensive. Like, I'm used to paying minimum $100 for a key set. Like, minimum. And, uh, I have so much cat fur on me. All the cat fur. Um, these traders, 
sets are, uh, I don't even remember. It might have been a hundred bucks, maybe. If that, they're 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 super cool though. This set pre-ordered, it's more now, $59 for this set. And it is a five-sided die sub PBT, sorry, five-sided reverse die sub PBT set. Um, this, this is a Sakura Kuro set. I believe same sort of thing. Five side die sub, 1.5 millimeter thick PVT, enhanced pre and and these are OEM and these are as well, and I prefer the OEM. Uh, well, I guess if I have original cherry, I like those as well. But if you're gonna like by default, I am so much more comfortable on the default OEM than anything else. Probably because I've typed on it on so long. I went like four years on the Steel Series 7G, so. It's just all about what I'm comfortable with, you know? And if I'm most comfortable with with OEM, that's what I'm gonna get. So this is kind of important too on this. If you're right, I plan for this to go on my Steel Series 7G when I rebuild it. Because back when I originally replaced the keycaps on that, back in back in those days, there were only um If you wanted P like non ABS, like you wanted PBT, they only had etched, not in, or they only had engraved, not etched. That that means you have letters, but they're like engraved into the keycap, not, and that's what uh, like WASD WASD keyboards used to do. Um, but there was no infill because that's how they used to do is they would engrave it and then, um, infill it with ink and stuff like that. A lot of them wouldn't even bother with that because it would just wear off. So that's part of the reason why the. Uh, Steel Series keys were such shit, such shit. So I have a black PBT engraved set that back in the day was quite hard to get um, in all the correct sizes for the Steel Series 7G because it has some weird ones. This though, because it's a 108 key set and it includes ISO, I think I'll be able to do it based on what I saw. And I think for the money, for 60 bucks, this, these are insane. Like they're they're way over top. Like I'm, I'm like it's so bad it's good, kind of a thing. So profile OEM, space for six point two five, that's good. Hopefully it has cherry and, uh, co-star stabs. For the space bar, otherwise I will have to modify it. That's what I used to do as one of my services. I sold to people. I think they even say cross switches compatible. Um, what they mean is cherry, guys. Jeez. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen a hard... Oops, some of them fell out. I don't think I've ever seen a hard Oh yeah, so they are reverse dice up. I mean like it said that, but like they're legitimately reverse dice up. And what that means, and I actually love reverse dice up. I've actually had some palm ones in the past. Um so the one that came off was number one here. This is like a hard plastic hard case with m magnets to hold it shut. I feel like this is definitely catering to the people who would never use it. Now I thought based on the pictures that this was gonna be more of an orange uh, and Steel Series color is orange. That's kind of why I was planning on using it on my Steel Series board, but it is, it's definitely yellow. Now my color is yellow, so that that's kind of fine. Um, but here's reverse die sub, bam. It's um, yellow keycap. Where the entire keycap is dice up black, except for the letter. 
normally what you do is take a white keycap or you know let a yellow keycap and then dye sub black on it. That's why I say five sided, you know, top and one, two, three, four. So these are kind of cool. Like I said, this design is kind of over the top. A lot of people were like surprised, kind of surprised I liked it. Come on. There we go. So you got a little thing that pops it apart. Um, keeps the sides separated just like a pizza box. If you've ever seen like the little like table in the pizza box, that's so that on a big pizza, the cardboard doesn't sink in and touch the pizza when it's hot, and then you pull all the toppings off. That's why the little table's in there. For those that didn't know that, now this space bar is fucking next level. And it does have, here you go, you can see on the bottom, uh, co-star is the outer ones, right? And then cherry is inner, right there and there. That's cherry. for And generally, co-star are plate mount stabs, and uh, cherry are... Um, you can have plate or PCB mount cherry. I would say PCB mount cherry are much more common. Um, nicely reinforced, which is very important on a PBT keycap. This one, as you can tell, is a five side die sub, but it is not a reverse die sub because that, that is white keycap. But if you look at our keys here, that space bar is insane. Look at that thing. I was really impressed by these trader sets. Like seriously, like the fact that they are what they are, and they're uh, they're made in, in Taiwan. You can see there, um, but uh, th these are crazy designs, especially for how much this costs, which is like by comparison next to nothing. Um, the other thing important is I generally do not do full size keyboards. Um, this set does. Um, oh, it's got a little date on there and something. I'm probably like what the set is. I can see that there. But uh, so here's your number pad. What's that? Uh, King's going after Gertrude. King Arthur. King, what are you doing? Huh? So that's your number row. Those must be your F keys. Right here. Right. And then you have plus four. Yeah, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, and you have four extra ones because it's a 108 key. Now, I'm going to have to use some of these extra ones. Um, and the reason is because Steel Series 7G is kind of weird. It doesn't have a standard backspace. It has two keys. So, Mooski really liked the keychain this thing came with. It is kind of cool. It's like a braided. I definitely, when I was younger as a kid, made this. Yeah, you know, sort of braid. Uh, do I remember how to do it off the top of my head? Hell no. Could I do it again? Yeah. I'm sure they used a robot for that, though. That's kind of cool with the... I might use this because I, I have, like, some keys for the hot swap bay on the front of um, my computers. If they have the hot swap. Uh, so I might put that key on here. Uh, just because, you know, the, the keyboard's going to have this keycap set on it. And, uh, you know, that, that'll kind of match, you know. They recommend you use this key puller. Um, I'm not saying you have to use this one for traders, but you want to use the wire style right here. And it's actually pre-bent. Normally this would come flattened, and you gotta stick your fingy in there and bend it out. Um, and then you have to get the correct balance between how thick you want the wires, because um, otherwise they bend, like down at the bottom here. But if you make them too thick, they'll start marring the keycaps. The reason why you wanna use this though is because it actually goes under the keycap, right, on the side, and you pull up like that. Um, if you use, like, the clip style, like, it looks like this, but it's got, like, two prongs on the end. 
and you, it, it's almost like a, like a modern switch puller. It looks very much like an uh, old school keycap puller. Um, those will go down the side, sides of your keycap and just scratch them the hell up. Being that these are five-sided double shot, meaning they're, du they're not double shot, uh, die sub, you really don't want to mess up the sides on them. So I think this is going to make a sick board. It's going to go over there. If you see the, the two monitors set up over there, um, with the, it's a 4K on the bottom and a 1200p on the top. That's the repair computer down here now. Uh, the setup's fully done. It's actually currently housing the old, my desktop. As to the right there, you can see the actual case for my desktop, and it is still completely empty. So my old desktop is just uh, imaged to the system down here, and I'm running that for now. Um, within a month, I should have a fully working main computer, though. So, And then I'm going to work on getting this keyboard built. So keep, keep your eyes peeled. Hit subscribe. Hit follow. I'll probably be streaming repairing um, my SteelSeries 7G keyboard because I really like it. It's one of the few, few native PS2 keyboards. And on the repair computer down here, it's very important to have a PS2 keyboard because that works as an interrupt. Meaning, instead of uh, USB pulling, checking if you press the button, it just tells the computer to press the button. So getting into BIOS, doing stuff like that, uh, it's much more reliable to actually get into the BIOS. Um, and then when you're in other things, you really don't have to worry about compatibility. Like... Oh, does it have drivers for my gaming keyboard? It's a PS2 keyboard. It's just, you know, you don't have to worry about that, which is important with troubleshooting. So, that's what these are. For 60 bucks, I think this is freaking crazy. Like, at the time, I think it's a little bit more now. You can go to mechanicalkeyboards.com, look up Traders. And this is the Tiger Sketch key set because of that space bar. You know, I think that thing looks amazing. And this whole... Like, I thought it was a bit more orange because of the tigers, but it looks like it turned out a bit yellow. It's a really nice yellow, though. Look at that underside of that keycap there. Nice and thick. PBT. Five-sided die subbed. The, some people were complaining about, like, the font's kind of crazy. I think it's, like, cool in an over-the-top way, if that makes sense. Um, so this case is something I've never experienced though. Like having like a full plastic case, these shipping, my only guess is it has to be because, and this was already a thing back when I was doing keyboards, but people would have many more, many, 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 many more keycap sets than they did keyboards. I, for one would always just have as many keycap sets as I as keyboards, uh, maybe plus one. And that was mostly for, ooh, it's not like closing. I gotta figure that out. Um, that was mostly for, uh, like if I was cleaning off a set, I could toss something on there. Cause usually it's not that hard to clean keyboard or keycaps, but like it would take a little bit of time. Um, I think I have two extra sets now. Uh, the Sakura set and the crap. What is the other one? Oh, it's the one that like Linus Tech Tips themed. I forget. It looks like the one orange and white gun that was super popular. Went back when I was playing in CS:GO in like the second season or whatever. Um, very cool keycap set. Charger actually has that set too. Um, it was one of those sets that that's like. A decent colorway that you know you could at any point make a board that goes with it. Um, I think he originally bought it to give it away and might have to the guys on Linus Tech Tips because it was it was it was legitimately like to people on the uh, Anime Club forum, not like Linus or anybody like that, you know. But like this was closing purpose perfectly when I got it. I have no idea why it's not now. I don't want to force it. I got no idea, guys. Either way, my, what I was getting to is I bet you they come in these hard plastic cases and stuff like that. Because people will buy, and if you see it lays it out like a keyboard still, a lot of previous, even cases I've had for keycaps, do not put them in a way that you could actually like 
oh, pull it out and be like, oh, look, I got this set. You know what I mean? Like, check it out. Whereas this is very much done in a way where you could, like, it'd be amazing on a display in, like, a... And Ty Taiwan has that, like, a lot of little tech stores and stuff like that. I would imagine in some of those, like, some of the best keyboard stores were actually out of Taiwan. Um... In Japan as well, there were, there were two very well-known ones there where, like, people would literally go there to buy keyboards. Like, from the U.S. and other countries, stuff like that. Um, imagine, like, you could have these with the box above it opened up. It would look really good on display. I have to admit. So that's where that's going. That was, like, reasonably priced. All right. So a lot of trader stuff, though. So that was $60, right? This is $25. Explain that for me. Please. Anybody? I, uh, I, I know understand you. 6.25 profile OEM cross switches. Yeah, like that set, I saw the space burner, I was like, holy crap. And then overall, uh, I, I definitely have to go on mechanical keyboards and save. I forget how I even saw it originally but I've, i think i found an ad or something because i don't generally like browse mechanical keyboards because I, I i i basically just use a happy hacking keyboard now guys seriously uh, i found out you can get the non-hybrid classic it's like the happy hacking keyboard classic now uh if you modify the ini files for the software you can actually program the classic because it has the same guts so that would have been good to know um the other thing I would like to look into is um, you way back in the day, Cooler Master made the Nova Touch, right? Cooler Master used to be huge in mechanical keyboard, yeah, huge, very large. They were one of the earliest players in the like gaming mechanical keyboard. I mean, like Steel Series was. But uh, they were one of the early players in adopting it. I still have, a, like, the, the, the Cooler Master Quick Fire Rapid was, like, the keyboard to have. Think about it as the HyperX cloud of, like, of keyboards. If you don't know, guys don't know about the hyper, original HyperX cloud, I'd be... Maybe you're super new. But HyperX clouds were based on a design, I think, by QPad, which was then, like, a knockoff of a Bayer Dynamic. I don't know if it's a knockoff would be the correct term. But very similar design to Bear Dynamic. And that's how HyperX made the clouds, which were a very good headset. It had a decent mic. And basically every time they have updated the HyperX cloud, it has just gotten worse. Legitimately. I might have messed up the order here. Hopefully not. But, uh, yeah, they've basically made it worse every time. In my opinion. I still have a pair upstairs, and I don't know if it's even relevant anymore. But I kept them as... Oh, okay, so we have a row... Um, five. R5. And we have an R1... R2, R3, oh these are Waz and Escape, I bet, I would put money on these being Waz and Escape, yes, so like this, I might be wrong. take a look um but yeah so hyperx cloud was like the de facto gaming headset because it was actually good it's basically what it comes down to that dude that dude that dude okay so i was correct in this but yeah it's wazd and escape i don't know if i would necessarily use those you'd have to have like here's the the quick picture from mechanical keyboards right there 
what I really bought that for is basically, and it, this is not uncommon, like a $25 space bar is, I'm not saying it's reasonably priced, but, um, you know, worth it in my opinion. These are surprisingly flat for PB2. They have a little bit of rock, but very, very, very little compared to what I'm used to back in the day. I bet you it's because of all that reinforcing in there. Same style keycap as the one in the Tiger Sketch. See traders on the back there. I kind of wish that wasn't there because I mean, you're never going to see it from this angle. But are you ready for this, guys? I prefer to run my space bars upside down and then you literally see it. If you're running, uh, I think Bad C Tech did a video on this and uh, I was like, yes, finally, somebody did it. Yeah, the most simple, easiest mod that you can do to your keyboard if you have a mechanical one that allows for this is flip it. Take your space bar and flip it. The reason being is if it's like this, it's away from you. Your finger hits this ridge right here. Especially like if you have cherry, it's even worse. Hits that ridge right there, right? If you flip it this way, it's angled towards you. Your hand's sitting here and you hit that flat every time. Bam, bam, bam. So I actually see on some more custom-ish designed, especially on the gaming keyboard market. Corsair even had a, a generation where this whole front row was angled towards you, which actually is actually a good idea in my opinion um now they chose to choose a non-standard layout for the keycaps and blah 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 and it was non-standard in the way of like people aren't used to the keys on the front rolling towards you um one of the newer good uh, dell rubber domes like good it's just got it's like a dell rubber dome like a plastic base um but it's like feels like pretty blop 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 bloppy um it's a little bit thicker and heavier i don't know how to describe it but it's like, you can see all the edges are curved, cut out. It's like it's just got like a plastic base and like everything's stuck in it. You'll probably, if you know Dell OEM keyboards, you'll know which one I'm talking about. Some people really like those. Um, if you look at those keys though, all the front keys towards you are angled towards you. Like like this way, not this way. Now that might be a big reason why people like that keyboard. Uh, sadly for this one, I could not do it because... Um, it would look weird, you know. But yes, basically bought this for the for that space bar because it's it, here. We can because we got the razor camera. Come on. There you go. It's fucking beautiful. Look at that thing. I'm not saying the uh, the other keys here are slouches, but oh, geez. by any means, you know, but. putting away when I was supposed to tell you about them. <coughs> Brain farts. Oh. Yeah, I really don't like... The, that box is super nice. This is uh, interesting because they just fall through the back because there's no backing on the foam. Maybe yeah, there's a reason for that. I, like I said, I'm kind of out of the keyboard loop. I can tell you about a lot of how, how the switches work, where a lot of the original modifications came from, why they were done, how they were done, who did them. <sighs> I don't know how much of that. I feel like a lot of the current keyboard culture is just like hype culture. I mean, I say prove me wrong on that one. Uh, I've looped not only my own switches, but for tens of people at least. Um, and I'd pay somebody, just like sleeving power supplies, I'd pay somebody to do that for me. Uh, I think uh, Mike the Manic Geek actually offered to do it. Obviously, it costs money and stuff like that, but... I may I I still have yet to build my TGR Jane. Some of you may know what keyboard that is, and that thing's probably gonna be one of my last boards I build, and it's gonna be perfect, or as perfect as I can get it. These actually look really nice. Um, like I said, you you would need just like the the traders thing shows. I think realistically you need an all black keyboard for this to even remotely make any sense as a whole. Now, any black, you know, any black or white keyboard, and they did have white spacebar as well, but the Sakura, 
Uh, this one has Sakura Kuro, I believe, for this one, which is Sakura Black. Uh, the they also said white. I just did not like the Sakura Blossom. Like the the one on here is just so nice. Um, uh, and where I was going with the Nova Touch is, um, Cooler Master teamed up with. Uh, PFU who makes the top race switches or they make the happy hacking keyboard and they might make the switches too I forget but basically the the Nova touch is a tankulous keyboard that has top race switches but instead of being top race stem they're technically top race stem but they're also chair max stem now that we can program a happy hacking keyboard it's my preferred board. I really like Ergo Clears. I can go and use those. Um, I have my Model F that I'm trying to get up and running. I'm gonna tweak some stuff. <laughs> tweak some stuff. Haven't had the time. Um, but it'd be nice to have a Happy Hacking keyboard that could take Cherry Max. Um, I know I have to rip the whole board of our uh, board warranties, etc. And I would do it to the non-silent personally. Um, but th imagine these keycaps right here on a happy hacking keyboard. I think that would look sick. This is one of these things because these are limited edition keycaps. The Sakura and the the Tiger sketch there. This I had an exact plan for. I saw it. I'm like, this is amazing. I mean, it's over the top amazing. Like, 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 uh, gaudy in a way. You know what I mean? But I'm like, it's gaudy, but it's fucking awesome. I'm putting it on. I know the exact board I want to put this on. This was kind of like, that space bar looks amazing. I want that set. It's I've spent way more on a space bar before. Let's pick it up. You know. So. Um, I'll have to find a place to keep these safe until I can use them. Uh, but yeah, if you guys know any connections, I think people are trying to like 3D print or, th or, or a mold or something. Uh, Cherry Max compatible top ray stems. Uh, let me know. Because uh, I really don't want to buy a... I think Cooler Master Nova Touch is like 300 bucks on their own. And people were literally taking those and a Type S, which is more than $300, and combining them. Um... And then the Nova Touch would basically, unless you got, a, like, Topper I did put out, um, they put out custom color keycap sets, which I had three or four of at one point. I really should have kept the pink ones, Cherry Blossom Pink. They were amazing. Um, otherwise, you didn't have an option to buy additional tankyless sets you could have put on there. Yeah, in my Cooler Master Nova Touch search on eBay, I find nothing. Like, like, nothing. Yeah, the only one I, other one I can think of that was a non Real Force or Happy Hacking keyboard that had Topre was, uh, or Topre, was the Leopold. It was like a 60 plus percent keyboard. Hey. Oh, nice. I just missed your thing. Can you send me a link, possibly? I don't know if you... I mean, if you put it in the chat, I'll try and grab it out of there. Otherwise, twatter it, t Twitter it to me. It's just at the prophecist. Um, I don't think we have our Discord linked down below. Um, because I just switched back to using my personal Twitch and YouTube and everything like that from the olden days. But yeah, I'll rip apart my, I have, I have my Japanese, um, Happy Hacking Keyboard Hybrid. I'll rip that apart. The Type S is for work, so, you know, I keep that kind of clean and I bought the Type S for work, so you're not like... You know what I mean. Also, I bought the Type S. Traditionally comes in the white. 
um, even though the layout's a bit different. Uh, general typing, if other people need to use it, they can. Um, you know, there's just some considerations you do it for a work environment or you do the opposite like if you purposely don't want people to use your shit uh <laughs> you know then you make it as hard as possible but uh yeah so i i'm super happy with this set uh did did you want to see the tiger sketch set i don't know if you were in here when that occurred because i only saw it just pop up now Cool. I don't know what you think, but like I said, it, it, it has its own vibe. The space bar is next level for sure in that set. Overall, I think it's it's a bit gaudy, but I think they did it like the right kind of gaudy. You know, like just the price on it, I thought is amazing. Five-sided um, die sub. Reverse die sub actually for that set. Well, on to the next thing. What do we got next? What do I need to swipe open? Desk keys, product desk sliders. Let's check it out. Ah, oh, crap! It's got to open Firefox. My poor laptop's crying. <laughs> KB fans, um, I don't know if they, like, fully exist anymore. I have to remember. I might be thinking of a different one. There's been a lot of keyboard stuff, starting with KB. I mean, it makes sense with keyboard being... 18 bucks for that. Yeah, I'll have to... Dude, I, I'll definitely crack open the Happy Hacking Keyboard Hybrid to pop these on there. I'll find, like, a matching black set. I wonder if Mechanical Keyboards has a Traders... Yeah, I, I, something about top right, dude. I, actually, my second true personal mechanical keyboard was... Actually, I can go grab it. It's just over here. So, it wasn't this Happy Hacking keyboard. I actually don't own it. A friend actually owns it and still uses it to the day. But it was a Happy Hacking keyboard uh, Pro 2. Um... So, uh, this is my current workhorse at home. I mean, it's got a hybrid. Because as soon as I could... That's actually why the oh, main reason why I moved away from Top Ray for the longest time is I couldn't program it. And yeah, if this thing looks worn, it is. It's um, been used since the day it came out in Japan. I bought one, imported one, and have used it since. So, uh, but yeah, I actually sold off all of... I had every... Top Ray and Real Force board that used to be available. Um, you know, like the 87U, the 23U, even the number pad. I really wish I would have kept that in black because they stopped making the black one for the longest time. Um, yeah, it looks kind of disgusting. That's because I just use it. That's the one nice thing. You buy this, pop it out of the box, you can use it for 10 years. You know, I did customize mine a little bit. I got the OG Purple Enter. Red Escape, and then the newer Red Control and Light Blue Escape. Yeah, I've seen the... I have my... I actually rebought a Pro 2. So the first thing I ever bought with affiliate money from the channels and Amazon and that sort of stuff was a Happy Hacking Keyboard Pro 2, another one. Because my buddy actually... That's, I mean, it's his now. He paid for it. And he literally uses it daily for programming. Uh, for work, you know, 
So it's like, I'm not going to be like, I want that thing back. No, it's a new home. But I, I, I one day, this is before the hybrid was out. I'm going to say a year or two before the hybrid was out. I wanted to type on a happy hacking keyboard again. Um, this was after your, my KMAC Happy. I was using that as a daily driver. Um, so I just bought one. That was the first thing I ever used any affiliate revenue because I really couldn't justify using like personal money for it because you know this wasn't a a needed thing. You know what I mean? Like it was just because, and I knew I wouldn't use it as my final board because um, I don't know how used to you are on the happy hacking keyboard layout but home end page up page down are in awful places by default and i knew i wouldn't program it so it, it never became my main board um but i wanted to have another one and, and type on it again that's why once the hybrid was out i was a happy happy man um because you know you can program it also for work bluetooth very very nice um, paired to the laptop, just turn it on. It goes still wired though. So what I would do this is I would have a, a previous job was a lot of on-site stuff. So I could have this with me when I'm doing emails, responding to tickets, blah, 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 use it that way. Then if I went over to somebody's computer and they had issues, I could use the USB on that. Oh, you got the snow? Fuck, dude. I know two people that got them. Did you get the Japanese one or the U.S. one? I've been trying to get a snow for forever, but people, um, I had an opportunity at a Japanese one and I didn't take it because I was like, eh. And then once the U.S. one came around with the labeling on it, uh, cause that's the difference. I don't know if you know that the Japanese one is literally blank completely. Yep. Yeah, I could have, I could have got the U.S. one, um, but it, I could have got that one too. But like that was when once I saw the U, and I was like, oh, I'll wait for it to come to the U.S. And then what they pulled is the U.S. one has all the labeling. It's still the white, white color, but all of the pro, pro hybrid, all that stuff's on there. And I was like, oh man, this is a bummer. And then I tried to get the Japanese one, and I couldn't anymore. So. Maybe one day if I see one pop up, but I'm I'm kind of holding out for the uh, the Japanese one over the and not the not the because Japan had both also they had the Japanese layout and then they had the U S layout as well. Um, so you could get both. Um, I would have gotten the U S layout completely blanked, pure white, you know, like no labels, no anything on it. Um, in the U.S. layout, so I could actually use it. Uh, I personally, I don't know how much you've gotten used to it, but I do prefer the non-type, like the the non-type S. I think the top ray has a much better sound. You know, when uh, it's not silenced at all, because for the most part, a lot of people don't know this, but top ray silent are on the way up, so it's coming up where the foam is. Uh, which is, uh, it, it just changed the, the, the vibe to it. And I've, I always felt like, too, the Happy Hacking keyboard, if you go back to, like, the Real Forces, because uh, originally Real Forces didn't have even uh, layout. So they were, like, a variable um, weight. So the further away you got from the home row, the lighter the keycaps. Because the thing is, like, you're reaching more. They felt that that was more ergonomic and better. Um, eventually they did come out with like all 45 gram, all 55 gram. I still felt the happy hacking keyboard, like pro two at the time typed the best out of all of them. I don't know if it's just cause it's more rigid cause it's smaller or what, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I use the, like I said, I use the type S for work for two reasons. Type S is by default in, 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 if you go back to the pro two, like, Type S was only in the, like, beige, off-white, gray way, which, you know, when you're at work, it's easier to see, right? And then also Type S, when, you know, I don't even have a full cubicle currently at work. It's like a desk with sides. You at least keep uh, other people less annoyed. The R2 is definitely a step down. 
there is like a high end version of it that has the like the variable adjustable keys. I have never used that. That's like the one I've never used. Is that is the variable adjustable keys. Um and also why I never personally owned a Nova Touch. I actually did swaps for people, swapping the stems from Nova Touches into happy hacking keyboards or real forces. Um, I never did it for myself because back then I had the keycaps. Like I had a top right pink and a top right lime, lime green. I don't know if it was called lime green, but I had top right colored keycap sets at the time. So I was like, oh, why do I need to swap keycaps? I have the legitimate ones. And then I sold all my top right stuff off once I got into being able to program the keyboard. That, that was more important to me. And uh, I'm kind of sad I did that because those keycap sets were never to be made again. Which is kind of annoying. But, uh, yeah. So, I might actually buy some of those sliders, convert this guy. Because um, these keycaps, like, even though they're PBT, you can start seeing um, that they got wear. Like, considerable wear. A little bit shiny there. I would have told you that the original Pro 2... Oh, you can actually see on the spacebar where I've worn through... You can see the center stem and the line with the support. Interesting. I've seen some of the... Those might have been the ones from Japan I've seen. Um, at one point I was going to try and get some. They're pretty rare and expensive from what I've seen, if it's that brand. But, uh... There you go. 2019 11.5. So this baby is almost three years old. And uh, I bought it as soon as I could find an exporter that was willing to export it. Uh, nowadays, I think you can just... Well, you can buy them in the U.S. You know what I mean? But... Uh, even after, even before they were in the U.S., eventually, um, kind of like the Sony headphones, like I, I use the M1STs, you can just buy them on Amazon, and Amazon will just send them to you. So, that's kind of cool. I'll, I'll have to save that. Um... Like I said, I haven't followed it too much because I'm just by... I just, like, buy a happy hacking keyboard now. Like, seriously, like, I had this for home. Then at my last job, uh, like I said, I was doing a lot of on-site stuff. And I really needed something portable. So I bought the Type S. Because um, it, it struck a perfect balance for that exact work environment. of I can plug it into somebody else's computer. I can Bluetooth to my own computer. Then I got, I, I got a mouse. I run the Rival 3 Wireless, which I Bluetooth to my laptop. And you can pull up the dongle. Put it in somebody else's computer if you're setting it up. Um, I was looking at traders to see if they had a black set. And they do, but it's sold out. Because, you know, I didn't think about that I would want a set to match the um, Sakura at the time. I'll have to do a bit of research, but... I'll probably convert this happy hacking keyboard just to use that set back there. I think that'll be pretty cool. Because I had no plans for it originally. Dummy key. Oh, and they have it on an original beige Pro 2. Interesting. Yeah, I was talking with uh, some of the, I think it was before there was the U.S. Happy Hacking Keyboard. Um, uh, where I was talking with the, the Japanese Happy Hacking Keyboard guys on Twitter. Guys or gals, I don't know who runs it, but... Um, uh, because they had all they they post from time to time these really cool custom ones, and that come out of Japan, like keycap sets and like individual keys, and they're all top race stem, obviously because it's that account. But I was trying to like figure out how to get them, and they're like, yeah, this is like uh, in some cases it's like stuff that's only sold in person there. Like you have to like be like know that keyboard 
um, retailer. But, uh, yeah, no, like, by far, um, if you watch Bad Seed Tick at all, like, once he finally got his hands on a, on a pro hybrid, like, he's like, yeah, I got all these other keyboards, and then he just sits down to type on this. Like, there's something about this that I am legitimately faster on this than I am a full-size keyboard. So... I'm more at home. It's something about, like, I like being able to touch from, like, the home row, touch the whole thing. Yeah, like this. It, it's probably because I've also, for the longest time, used a laptop keyboard. And if you look at a laptop, they're basically 60% for, like, a small laptop, like a 12, 13, or 14 inch. So I'm just so used to this. Dude, 60s, the trader's keycaps were 60. That oh, that looks really cool, yeah, for sure. I do think it's funny how they're, they are showing it off on like an OG Pro 2. Like we're talking like, I don't even think, that's not a Type S, I don't even think. Just funny how they put the colorways on there. Because that colorway definitely looked better on the black one. In my opinion. But yeah, I will have to save these. Um, especially those stems. I will... Uh, three years R&D, multiple prototyping. Compatible with almost brands, SP, GMK. Oh, even... Okay. Desk keys, dome gaskets. Oh, for anybody else who's watching, I think today was the last day. But they had a sale on the U in the U.S. at least on the Happy Hacking keyboards through the directly through the website. I think a standard Happy Hacking keyboard was down to like one seventy. I posted it on Twitter. It was. Uh, it was like a bank, like I was seriously considering buying them, especially when I did some quick research and found out you can get around the programming issue on the classic, classic, which is the wired only version of this. Um, you just have to modify an I and I file and you can program the classic according to geek Hack. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised cause I was very surprised. That's like, well, this one can be wired. You wouldn't make a whole different PCB and controller for the classic. And it turns out they didn't. It's just a very soft code in um, software to do that. Uh, I think it's a little bit tricky reflashing, like if you were to brick it or something, because it's not natively supported. So you make sure you back up the default. Like there is no default configuration saved, obviously, then. Um, but yeah. Uh, save that, make sure you do, and then modify it to your heart's content um, through the normal keyboard software. I think you just have to add that model to the list of supported or remove it from the list of unsupported. It's something very, very simple. Um, so I was very, very, very considering buying another one. But uh, Yeah, it's definitely it's something that was added after. Um so what they did is they made the classic and then added batteries. You know, it, same way they did the original hybrid. It's a very Japanese design in that regards. They're like, well, um, well, we made the keyboard and we added batteries. You know, and I, don't, I haven't seen the inside of the, the hybrid yet, or the, the Pro Classic. I don't know if there is room actually under here to do this, to use double A's. Normally would I have lithium double A's? I'm guessing I stole these from work. Oh, no, no, no. These are from, uh, see, not for retail sale. I think I stole these out of an Xbox controller or something. I can tell you why they don't double A's though, because when these die, you know what you do? You go and get another set, and you just pop them in there. And people are like, oh, they should have put an integrated uh, lithium-ion battery. Nope. 
in 10 years when you're still using this, that thing will be shot. Double A's. Always going to work. So that, that's why they did that, is because they, they, they don't build their keyboard, you know, like a, like a, like a, uh, I'm waking up my computer over there because I just turned this on. Um, they don't uh, do a Corsair, who's like, oh, you got to buy the next best, greatest thing, or like Logitech. Um, like, uh, finding replacement keycaps for, like, I had one of those thin boards from them that use the kale switches, that like the two prongs. Finding replacement keycaps for that is literally, like, impossible. Also, you know how long this thing lasts? on a double-A. I, I actually usually use this one wired. It's only on double-A's right now because my desktop has been relocated. Um, and I didn't really feel like running a wire and the computer had Bluetooth. Um, but the work one has gone through two sets of lithiums and one set of normal in I want to say two years. So, like, that's the perfect place for a uh, alkaline or a lithium double A, you know, like the the Energizer lithium advanced or whatever it is. You know, like the the non reusable lithium double A's or these alkalines, because it's such low draw. If you even put like a rechargeable nickel metal hydrate in here, it would be draining faster than the keyboard drains it. So, but uh, yeah, the. This is, like I said, I just picked this thing up type away. When I brought it down here to use on the keyboard down here while I uh, have to re redo some stuff in the office, I want to say my typing speed doubled because I was using like a, a Tankulus. It's a, a WASD V2 that I have kind of upgraded to a V3 that has the metal case. It's, and it's got, uh, I don't know if you've seen the amazing chocolate tier keycap set. Like it's like a really nice keyboard. That's the one that's usually down here uh, and will be down here until the Steel Series 7G is done with the, with these keycaps. But like, that's not my standard keyboard. I type on on a happy hacking keyboard eight plus hours a day. Um, so when I switched back to using one down here or brought it down here, I should say, um, it was like brrr, I'm like, wow, I don't feel like I'm being held back, you know. Whereas, whereas using that other keyboard, as, as nice as those keycaps are and they look amazing and as, as nice of a keyboard as that, that is, especially once that aluminum case went on there, um, it it's just not what I'm used to using. So I'm going to put this back on the pooter over there since I've woken it up. <sighs> I mean, something else we can show off real quick that came in recently. Um, Kitsune Natsuki. That's a, uh, a band, side band of the guys on 9mm Parabell and Bullet. Uh, these recently came in from Japan, I'm going to say last week finally. These are like their, I don't want to call it, like these two are definitely their demo discs. I think this third one is as well. Um, and this is made by a related band on the same label. It costs so much to get stuff shipped here probably more than what these cost that I picked them up but this is some of the most interesting like CD packaging I've ever seen like it folds in on itself and then it's like here there you go first demo Odoro Odoro is a good song um that's the lead guitarist and vocalist of uh, 9mm Parabell and Bullet but it's just a, I didn't expect, like, I could tell that they were, like, cardboard when I ordered them. Um, I was thinking it'd be something more like this, like a, a cardboard sleeve. You know, something like this I've seen is, like, a, you know. That I've seen before, something like that. Maybe not this exact packaging. But uh, this was this was super unique. And this is kind of very much their side project, so I'm sure they can be extra artsy with it, you know. So 
thought I'd share that uh, packaging because it is. Japan does the weird thing with their medicine too. A lot of their medicines are powdered, and they, they like fold up paper, and it's like in there too. Like that's just a thing traditional for them. Um, so I don't know if that's like this is kind of based on that. You know what I mean? Um, the stuff, anything you order from there comes packaged immaculately. And yes, you do have to pay a bunch because I had to send this to a forwarder. So you like order it in Japan, send it to your forwarder. Uh, I did, yeah, I think this was two orders or something. Um, cause these were new ones. I had to pre-order them and these were already existing ones. So it was two orders. Then they combine them and they, then that place repackages them because obviously it's got to go overseas to you. And originally they were not packaged to make, be able to survive the travel overseas. So they like repackage it. And it's like all individually bubble wrapped and super nice. Um, yeah, you can go to Amazon JP to get this stuff. What you want is a service called Tenso. T-E-N-S-O. Um, you have to sign up for it. You have to prove your uh, like that you actually live where you do. Um, and then they'll afford it. Because and the, the reason why that that's important and why they can do it is because they're a company. Japan's weird. Um, individuals cannot ship products internationally. It, there's like, and that happened like I want to say like right before COVID. Um, I said the bad word. Oh no. Um, but uh, so it, it's like they can forward it to you without any issue. But you ordering it directly from somebody, like even if you ordered it off of like uh, like a auction site or something, that person would never be able to get like, not like rights, I want to say, but like it wouldn't be legal for them to send it to you directly. Somebody's got to handle that in between there. Um, oh, sorry. I'm also live streaming on YouTube and I didn't have it up. I only have the Twitch chat up in uh, OBS. I've imported JP Wheels, but I had to use proxy service through. Yeah, in yeah, okay. So Yahoo Auctions is going to be even a bit different. The reason is, is because I don't. I you can tell me if you were able to, but I don't believe that you were able to bid on Yahoo Auctions. Um, like you yourself, you probably paid the proxy to bid for you. Um, Yahoo Auctions requires having at least a Japanese mobile number. And then that probably requires a Japanese Yahoo email. Um, creating that may require Japanese payment method. So I have almost overcome all of these hurdles. Uh, no, I just gave the proxy money and bid up to the limit. Yep. Yep, exactly. Like So you couldn't bid on it. The proxy had to do it for you. So that, that's a little different. Um, there are also things for Mercari. Uh, that's actually a thing in the U.S. now. Like, we have U.S. Mercari. But uh, in, it was the thing in Japan years before it was here. Um, there, they actually... There was enough stuff being sold, like, internationally from there, from the used market. Because the thing of that is, like, Facebook Marketplace, if you haven't used it in the U.S., it's very similar to that, or Craigslist. Um... But it all goes through them, like shipping, payment goes through them, whereas like Craigslist it wouldn't. Um, but they actually made, there's actually like a service that works with them to then act as a forwarder specifically for it. Uh, it might be called WorldShip. I've used them before. Uh, Tenso is more of a... Um generic forwarder as in like they're they're independent of a service um or of a specific like site or company um basically anything you ship them 
you have 30 days to decide if you want to con con consolidate it, meaning like these two came in two shipments. Um, I waited for, these were already there. They were sitting there, I think like 25 days or something. Then these showed up. Then I could squish them together and make one shipment to come to the U.S. So yes, you're paying shipping twice. Shipping within Japan is pretty darn cheap, like actually really cheap. Um, shipping to the U.S. is the opposite of cheap. Um, but uh, like here's, uh, I would say, 40 bucks or somewhere around there is about average to get like this to the U.S. in a decent amount of time. Um, that includes packaging and handling and that sort of stuff. Uh, when you do use a forwarder like that, especially because you're going through a company, you actually like um, have to specify like what the item is. Like some of this is for cu uh, U.S. customs, some is for Japanese customs. Um, in that their case, you you literally even if it's like an, uh, an online item, you literally just put the link of the item. Like you call it, like you name it, then you put how many you have of it. Uh, like what category it is, and then they want a product link. Japan wants that to leave the country because they want to make sure it's not on that restricted like items list or like certain ones would like you'll have to pay more uh, customs to get it out, stuff like that. Um, U.S. as long as it says the correct thing on it and it isn't like it isn't something that you have to pay money for the most part. We don't have to pay customs fees in the U.S. Um, there are certain things that can't come in and there are certain things like alcohol is one that you will get taxed when it comes in the U.S. internationally. Like if you blow and buy it in Mexico and bring it across the border, uh, cigarettes would be another one. So. Yeah, the uh, you I uh, another one, uh, if you use HMV, H, it's just HMV. There is an HMV U.S. You want the Japanese one. Um, they will ship internationally as well, and they will ship directly internationally. Now, uh, Tenso will, I also use CD Japan. I've been using them for 20 years, I want to say, um, or better part of it. CD Japan will ship internationally. The default used to be EMS, which is, that's like Japanese post, essentially. Uh, that basically stopped existing after, you know, Corona Chan came, um, because they ship their stuff internationally on passenger jets. Well, when you cut off your country internationally um, and don't let flights in, you're not going to have flights out because you can't get out of the country either. So then you don't have a way to do your mail internationally because you can't put your, your packages and your mail on these passenger jets because you don't have any. So then everything went via boat. But then there, uh, I mean, you may or may not know this, but there was the whole boating issue still to this day with logistics where things used to take... I don't know, in a month, generally, would be to get from Japan or China to the U.S. Like, the whole trip would be a month. Uh, now it's like you're lucky to get it in three if it goes via a boat. So, um, yeah, there's that. What you do then, and how, how this was gotten around, was DHL. I'm just grabbing some stuff here. Uh, DHL has their own planes. Thus, they're not restricted by using passenger jets because they have their own planes. Uh, I would say right now, if I order, if I ship via DHL, um, I get stuff quicker than I do. If it's not two-day shipping in the U.S., and even sometimes if it is, I get it generally within a week from Japan via DHL. Most places in the U.S., shipping within the U.S. cannot get me stuff in a week. Or a week would be, like, good nowadays because of where I live. I don't live, like, super remote, but I'm not, like, in a, you know, like, Chicago or something. Yeah. New York. So, it, a lot of times DHL from Japan is literally faster than, um, this is the laptop webcam full size. It's potato. Um. But, uh. It's, uh, so go DHL. Uh, Tencel lets you specify which one you would like. Uh, they do, like, a warning on EMS now. They're like, yeah, we can't guarantee any deliveries. Um, CD Japan basically does not let you ship via EMS anymore. 
um, because they're having such trouble with it. They originally didn't have DHL as an option, but then later on switched. Uh, HMV, however, because they ship it as if they would normally in Japan, like they're like a media retailer. You'll be able to buy like brand new CDs directly from them or brand new vinyl, and they'll just ship it internationally. They have like their central location ships internationally. So if you buy used stuff, which I think is the best way to go, um, you buy uh, used stuff and then you sh the, like they'll internally consolidate it for you. They ship it all to the central like location that will ship internationally. They'll hold it until all the rest comes in um, and then they'll ship it internationally. They will only ship, though, via Japan, uh, Japan's postal service, which is EMS. So I want to say it literally took two and a half months last time I got my, uh, I have, I'll have a video eventually coming out about it, like two and a half months it took to get stuff here. And that was like a month or two ago, I want to say, that it came in. So just something to be aware of. I would use DHL when possible. It is more money. Uh, in some cases, not a ton more because um, it's already not cheap to ship from Japan. But it uh, it's worth the he the the not headache, I guess. You do get tracking number with EMS, but it's not. It's like kind of like, hey, it got to Japan thing. It hit Japan customs. It left Japan, and then it's like, oh, it got to the U.S. And then you have to track via U.S. tracking. Um, whereas DHL, because they're handling it the whole way, um, you you literally have boom boom boom. Hey, we're gonna be here this day. Um, etc. So, uh, a lot of the stuff I get from Taiwan, Hong Kong, I also ship DHL, like, I will pay more. Like, I will pay double a lot of time, um, on shipping to get DHL. Because you actually get, like, oh, shipping from China is a mess. Because they have so many different, uh, like, carriers in, like, internally that... I literally, at one point when I was doing shipping and tracking for, like, keyboard stuff, I, I, like, paid for an app to be able to do all that. Because it, like, consolidated all the different websites' tracking apps into one app. Uh, nowadays, you don't have to pay for it as long as you don't do uh, too many. It's called Parcels. It looks like... Uh, let me switch the cameras again. It looks like this. Parcels. See, right there. Use that... It pretty much does anything. Uh, it doesn't, unless you pay them, though, it does not maintain it. It only does, like, so many days after it's been delivered. And you can only have so many tracked at once. So. Stupidly expensive item. Cable from Taiwan. It had some trouble. They solved it in two days. Yeah. I mean, um, in most cases, too, lately, with DHL, I've been getting stuff early. It's like, oh, it'll be here Friday. And then Tuesday. It's out for delivery. And I'm like... What? And the downside is you got to sign for it. And, um, you know, I got to work. So sometimes I am, I'm not necessarily there to sign for it. And that is a thing to expect from Japan as well. Every package in Japan you sign for. So expect every package that comes to the U.S. you have to sign for, period. You know, just, you will have to sign for it. Because literally, that's how they do, you'll get stuff, like, within a day in Japan. Like, it's crazy how, how fast their shipping is there. Like, within Japan. Um, but it's always, like, some dude literally hand-delivering it to your door. And you'll have to sign for it. Um, alright, so, here's something I just wanted to show off. I did make a video on it, you'll see when coming out. Uh, Muski and I were in there. This is my new battery bank. Uh, we did figure out what the name is. It's not Char Geek like I thought it was. Uh, I don't know if you can see it there. And it's not Char Geek. It's Charge Eek. Because their original name is Charge. Like Charge with an S. And they added Eek. So Charge Eek. Uh, this is the Storm 2 Slim. Uh, the original one is the Storm 2. This is the Slim. So this has four batteries in it. The Storm 2 is doubly, doubly thick. It's a thick boy. And uh, has eight batteries in it. 
This, however, still has a USB-C and a USB-A. C does 100 watts. The A does 30 watts. That is exactly what I need. We're rocking a, um, over here, that is a Razer Blade Stealth. That uses 100 watts Type-C. Okay, so that is why I needed a battery bank that would do 100 watt Type-C, but also could do more because it was, I've had charger, like even wall chargers, the, the early ones that only do 100 watts Type-C, then your phone's dying, right? Your phone's dying and um, you want to charge it, but you can't because if you plug in a phone into here and you only have 100 watts total, it can't charge your laptop anymore. So... This uh, perfectly fit my needs. I also prefer, like, this is enough battery juice for me. It's uh, 20,000 milliamp hour. Um, this is about the same size as my old Razer battery bank that I had. Um, it's a little bit longer, but uh, skinnier this way. The coolest thing about this is, I mean, it, it's freaking clear. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty clue, I think. If I recall, this one's purple. I think the the standard Storm 2 might be like blue or something. Here, I'm going to blow your mind, though. I'm going to use this microfiber from... I don't know why a knife... My knife came with uh, this microfiber. Real steel microfiber cloth. That seems kind of weird. Here it is. This thing. This thing's freaking beautiful, I think. Been looking at this thing for over a year finally came back in stock and i pulled the trigger right there is that's a that's a screen that's a screen all right plug this bad boy in plug the phone in all right check this out you'll get stats I think that's freaking cool. I don't know about you, but it tells you how much watts, how much volts, discharge, length of time. Um, if you plug in and charging, it'll do in instead of out. Um, and if you have two devices plugged in, like you toggle between them. But uh, the reason why, to me, that's so important is because I don't know about you, but Type C devices, especially. They, 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 it's like, just like this Razer Kyo Pro webcam I'm on right now. Like, yeah, it has a Type C port, but it doesn't actually follow the freaking standard. So, like, having an LCD like this, you can actually verify without an external device that it's actually charging the way it's supposed to be. Um, or sometimes you, like, plug stuff in and I'll be like, okay, this charger theoretically should charge this, but then it doesn't. And you have no explanation as to why. Oh, so this key, this cable's pretty dope. I like that color a lot. I like yellow, but I think they did a good job with that. And here, uh, I should be able to show you. Here's how we found out it was originally charge before we did a bunch of research and found out that was the case. There you go. See charge. So. This thing literally ticked all the boxes. Looks freaking cool. Um, and then I found it had an LC, like it had the LCD thing too. This was shortly after I found out about these. I think they're a little bit older than the Anchor one that has the the uh, and you got actually like a little menu. Like you can tell it what how how long you want it to stay on. Um, right there's the display sleep. I think the timer is to reset how long it's been on or how long it's been charging a device in force powered off um it does auto turn on like you don't have to hold this turn on you can just plug your device in and it'll turn on you know better banks do that um supposedly the operating system is upgradable the, the company has not really been around long enough for me to be like yeah trust them it's totally i mean like look os version one like we'll see if they properly support it i really hope they do um theoretically too like look you can see the batteries like theoretically you can replace these 
You know what I mean? Like, which is all that happens to battery banks over time is the batteries die. So, like, if you could like replace these, these should be twenty one seven hundred cells. Um, you should theoretically just be able to replace them. Um, which is, I think that's super cool. So I wanted to support them. It is not cheap. I'll probably throw a, a link down in the description. Um, could probably do that right now. But it is, uh, is not cheap. Uh, let's check my order history here. This was actually the, the latest thing that I kind of, I, I haven't, we haven't been all that active lately, so I haven't gotten a bunch of revenue or anything like that from you guys. I appreciate when you do watch, watch ads, you know, that sort of stuff, or use my affiliate links especially. Um, if you ever need one, let me know. Hit me up in Discord or something like that. Um, but, uh, oops. I was able to buy almost all of this with affiliate revenue. So, and that's super important because this is what keeps stuff running. Like if we want to charge cameras, um, phones, laptops, uh, any of that sort of stuff. So, and about a year ago, I want to say, or a bit, a bit, maybe even a bit more than that, the Razer one finally died. I loved that one. Um, and then I actually bought two on eBay. Somebody had brand new old stock and then they fucking scammed me. And I never got them. eBay did eventually get my money back from them, but it's like, that's such a weird thing because that, that battery bank was so niche. You could, battery bank was so niche. You could only ever get it through Razer directly. Um, it was like $150, which, I mean, like this is more expensive, but like back then $150 for a battery bank was insane. So it's like, the, the fact that they weren't legit was like, that's the weirdest thing to, th to scam somebody on. Like, who's ever buying this is a enthusiast. Like, they know what they're buying. Um, and after that, I just had a sour taste in my mouth. Nobody made a battery bank that I was interested in. And then I saw this one. So. When it starts, it gets warm. Any of these will get, like, any of these will get warm when discharging heat. I, I wouldn't say it gets hot. Like, no warmer than, you know, like a charge, like an AC adapter would. Like, for a laptop, you know. Um, some of those get real warm. But, no, it gets warm. Um, that is something I did like about the Razer one, though. It was fully aluminum, so the whole thing was a heat sink. This does have it on the ends. Supposedly, this is heavily impact resistant. I really don't plan on testing that. Um, it's probably just like a polycarbonate. It seems plenty solid to me. You know, like, I can't squeeze it with my my hand um but uh yeah I, I actually emailed them they do make wall chargers they're a bit older of a product from them what i want next is this exact thing 130 watt single type a single type c i want the wall charger with the screen for the same reason like i, I like you know say you know that the pixel six only charges at nine volt right um and it does like i don't know two amp or something no it does more than that because it's like 30 watts total or something well you'll see that it's doing you know nine nine volts on there and it's correctly working now you can use one of these inline testers i have used those before for like troubleshooting and stuff um but like you can't run that day to day um or like say if it's uh, your switch isn't charging properly that needs 15 volts to charge properly. That's why if you've ever seen somebody plugging into a normal outlet or a normal battery bank and it's like not charging it, it's barely keeping it alive. That's because you need one that does 15 volts. With this screen, you can tell that. So what I want is half this, like chop it right there, make it a wall wart, and I carry that with me too. I think that would be an amazing product. Go put this back. Oh, and uh, like the manual, I actually am going to keep. I don't know, but it's like really cool because I actually did it in the colors. Like you can tell that this was like, so, like it was somewhat design focused. And normally I'm a function over form, but if I can get some form with my function, I'll take it. You know, like they have all the color codes and stuff like that. Like I just think it's really cool.
Uh, the one thing that the Storm 2 full size does that this doesn't is it actually has an AC jack. You know, like think of the barrel plug on your laptop. And you can actually program that jack to be any voltage. Like within the range that this can do. So it's like, I think it's like 0 to 30 volts it can do. Or not 0, but like 0.1, like 1 to 30 volts essentially. Um, so if you devices that only are powered off that, like a barrel plug, the bigger version of this, uh, the Storm 2, like the thick, the thick boy has another type C on it, which can also be used to charge it while it's discharging. Uh, and then it has a dedicated uh, DC jack, which if you have something like that, that's the first time I've seen that, that has a programmable voltage output. Like if you have something that you need to charge via battery, that it, like you can't just do a five volt from USB or something like that. Um, that's, that, that's super useful, super duper useful. Well, besides Pokemon cards, got a deal on USB extensions. Got 10 of them there. I'm not going to actually use these for extending USB 2.0. They're really cheap and thin, but I do need to use USB to power things regularly. A lot of times those have short cables, so this was perfect for that. Um... You know, like backlighting on monitors a lot of times is USB. Now, hey, if you have a hub in your monitor, perfect. Plug it in there. If you don't have a hub in your monitor, oh, you got to go to like a wall or your desktop or, you know, you need it longer. Those are good for that. Um, so we need some more tools. Uh, this one, there will be a video coming out if you guys follow on Twitter at all. Um, you'll see I, uh, re or I, I tweeted at Linus, so it's pretty popular, but, uh, I could not find my, I have two of his screwdrivers on order. I have an all black stealth, like black shaft, black everything. And I have a silver shaft with orange accents. Um, I could not find my snap on. So I ordered... The cheapest one that I could get my hands on that looked like it was in decent condition. And that ended up actually being this pink one. It looks a little bit off on my screen here. It is very pink. If you check the, the Twitter, um, the pixel gets it bang on. Like it is fluorescent pink. Um, turns out this color is actually like a limited ish color. Uh, because uh, they normally do this for like breast cancer awareness month around this time, I believe, of the year. Um, so normally these go for a good amount of money, but this was sold as used. But obviously, look at this. Came with the box. Um, if you look at all the bits. Now, I've used them since because I don't yet have my Lion's Tech Tip screwdriver. But all of these bits, they've never been touched. So I essentially got a brand new screwdriver in the box for the price we used one. Like a, a nice used one, which hey, happy about that. Hopefully someday I do find my original Snap-on because I've had that thing, I don't know, at least five years. So it's kind of a bummer that I couldn't, but I wanted to make sure I had one for comparison because this is, this is the model he previously used here. So that, that's, that's contender number one. Check off the check uh, check off check out the tw the twatch here. All right. Uh, sure. We'll do this guy as contender number two. This is one I bought. I want to say the week before the announcement from Lance about. Like, that you could actually pre-order the, uh, the Linus Tech Tip screwdriver. Just be 
people in the anime club chat chatting about uh I was poking about posting about shrinkflation. Um how Gatorade said it, their change of the bottle design was totally not at all because of increasing pricing or anything like that. They were planning on that for years. I call bullshit. Uh, this is just a DeWalt one. It's a new one. I have quite a few DeWalt screwdrivers. Um, uh, let me grab an older one. There you go. So, here's one I already had. Butt spins poorly kind of like this is probably the most similar to the one Linus is making instead of the bits coming out here though I'm pointing this way and that way they go in here um, and point this way like towards the middle uh, or you can put a big one in there that goes the whole way um, it the mechanism feels garbage the end turns backwards easier than forwards like, it, it literally doesn't turn this way, but it turns this way. Very weird. Uh, one cool thing is it, is it actually takes extensions instead of, like, this has a fixed shaft. Um, this DeWalt contender number two for the, the LTT screwdriver challenge, you know, What did I do? What did I do in my life? Oh no. Oh no. Okay. So here's contender number two in the LTT screwdriver challenge. Uh, this is one that I've not seen anybody else do. Um, it is like brand spanking new as far as I'm aware. Um, got it at Home Depot. It was 18 bucks. Um, picked it up. I've used it a whole bunch since. Um, just for random shit around the house, working on projects. Um, it's actually, like, not half bad. This sounds like garbage, though. Listen to that. It's like a child's, like... Child's toy. Essentially, in, the, in like the ratchet department, uh, there's quite a bit of wiggle here. Um, I mean, like ergonomically, it's actually super nice. It gets very thin here. It does have quite a bit of knurling compared to the snap-on here. However, this knurling here is garbage. Like it, it's almost smooth. Like it's there, but like barely. The knurling on here, though, on the selector. I'm sure you can see that. It's like really, really nice. Um, this switch mechanism here is like... You have to move it quite a lot. There's also a lot of play left to right here. But uh, you have to move it quite a lot, but it is definitely like a... You know you're doing it. You know what I mean? Um... Just takes your standard quarter inch bits. Comes with a slew of them. You can actually, you see I have four extras. You cannot fit them all in here. So, I actually quite like this rubber. I It, it would probably wear down over time. It's just like a standard rubber over mold. Um, I can't tell if it's molded into this inner plastic, but I think it is because this is like the hard plastic underneath. So, this should wear... Maybe about the same or maybe a little bit worse than your power tools. Seems to be a bit thicker. But like overall, like this is this is half decent. Like when I saw what Linus was doing, I'm like, this is actually like pretty close. That's why I had to pick it up. And actually when I was posting about it, people thought because that was the weekend of the like uh event where you could pick them up in person, people thought this was one um because I was memeing about it and it, it's definitely not. So um for the price, it's not bad. Um, you can see on the inside where that's where the shaft goes down into. Um, yeah, it, it's like definitely not bad. Uh, where it's not good though is this. This is your bit holder. 
All right, I'm gonna try and take a bit out. Oh, yeah, it just just falls out. Like, I really think you're probably better off going the uh, the snap-on route and just chucking your bits in there and putting the end on. But then here, check this out. This thing cross threads so easily. See that? Like if you don't have that inner piece on there, it does not want to line up correctly. So it wouldn't be quick at all. Now what it does do is it has a little notch at the end. However, what that means is that if you see the little nubbins there, every time you open and close it, and I actually see mine, there's already wear. Let's see if we can get this. And remember, this thing's $18, not $70. Uh, but you can see on the little teeth there where it latches over, they're already wearing out. And I've probably taken the cap off sub 20 times. So, though it is nice that you screw it on and then, like, it's it's kind of on there, right? And you go like this, it goes, and it's tight. Um, but that's going to wear out. Because it's just plastic going over that bump, and it's having to flex. Um, and I can tell you that, uh, yeah, you can see on here, too. Those are those teeth are getting worn out. His tool costs sixty nine dollars. Uh, by comparison, I want to say the the uh, snap on one new is eighty, ninety, somewhere in that range. Um, normally those, like the limited edition one, if you like the hundred year snap on one, that one's like a hundred to $120 screwdriver. Cause it's like a limited edition. I've seen that pink one go 90 plus before. Um, so yeah, this is a much lower tier. Like if you want the same style screwdriver so far as Alliance tech tips, I don't have that one yet, but this one's seeming very close. I really wish they would have taken this knurling here. I think this is on aluminum though, right? This is really nice. Nice and nice and grippy compared to this, where this is like rolled in there. And I'm betting because of the finish here, this is like, uh, what do you want to call it? Like where they roll it in like rocks and stuff. Um, or it might be bead blasted as well. I'm guessing they did the knurling first and then smoothed it out, which then smoothed the knurling out. That would be my guess. I might be wrong. I'm usually pretty correct about that sort of stuff. Um, but uh, the other one annoying thing is, is this is reverse. And this is how most ratcheting screwdrivers are. Say if you want to tighten it, right? You actually turn the ratchet to the left. It's like a like, and that's what you do in a normal ratchet too. It makes no fucking sense in my opinion. So if you, you have to turn it counterclockwise on the ratchet to turn the screwdriver clockwise, okay. And then you want to undo. You actually have to make this tighten, and then you can undo it. And that's how ratchet like a ratchet works too. However, and I'm glad Linus did this because this is how Snap On did it as well. And this is the correct way to do it, in my opinion. Okay, if you want to tighten something, this is a much tighter... See, the, right here you can see. Look, nice snap. Between selections here. So, and it's just this much movement. Right, on the snap-on. On here... You have, it's very hard to show, I think, that much. Quite a bit more. More than double, I'd say. Uh, but here's the other thing, though. In order to tighten, right, you want to turn the screwdriver right, you move that to the right, and you can screw the right. You want to, you want to unscrew it, move that to the left, you're unscrewing. That is how it should be. So I'm glad he did that, and it's probably because he's used to the snap-on. Um, one thing I will say is doing this by hand, like if you're putting a screw in real slow, 
the Snap-on, though sounding way better. Like, this ratchet mechanism is so much tighter. The problem is it actually makes it harder to turn. So you can tell this was definitely more designed, and this is designed for automotive work. So it's a much heavier mechanism in there. Um, if you were to watch like Project Farms video, uh, this is represented by the Williams. Williams is who makes this older design for Snap-on. So it's very, very similar. It's missing some of the features, but very, very similar. Like I said, nobody covered this one. It's in a different price tier. It's 18 bucks, under 20 bucks. Like it's it's cheap enough that it was something that we were we were at Home Depot for picking some st stuff up for around the house, doing projects, and I could grab it and throw it in a cart and you know use it. Uh, whereas uh, you know that Snap On, <laughs> nope. Linus is for 70 bucks, nope. But I mean like you're gonna have those for basically forever unless you're. I don't usually lose things, so I'm very surprised I can't locate my Snap On um, ratcheting screwdriver. Um, I may have left it someplace, gave it, lent it out to somebody, gave it to a friend or something, and it never returned. That's usually the most common way for me to misplace things, is it goes someplace and doesn't come back. Which is, you know, a bit sad. So, next up, we have Contender number three. It's packaged very simply. It is also another pro tool, I would say, just like um, Snap-on. You know, this is in the same league. Um, oh, yeah, I should say, like, Linus did not do rubber uh, because he's worried about it breaking down. This wouldn't have that same issue. I don't know if I mentioned that. Because it's like the same rubber you see in your drill. This is an overmold. So there's a hard plastic, yellow, just like this cap underneath here. And what they do is, well, this is still, like... Um, like basically they shoot this, then they put another mold right over top of it and shoot the soft stuff right in it. And usually there's holes inside and places where it can grip. It's like, if you've ever taken it apart, um, you probably have never taken it apart. Watch AVE, some of his tool disassembly videos, he'll go over the different types of plastics and how the over moldings are done, but they're like physically stuck to it. Like it's kind of like, like a double shot in your, you know, in, uh, Joyland, in your case, you're used to double shot keycaps. You know how that's one, that's two plastics, like literally shot into each other. Same thing here, except there's a hard plastic, and this might be a nylon reinforced plastic if it's like a drill, and then there's like a, a rubber style plastic that is the grip. So this isn't one that's going to get all sticky over time generally if it's anything like a tool, like a like a drill. And Dewalt can do that because they already have a lot for their power tools. Mega Pro, which is Challenger number three. For the Linus Tech Tip screwdriver. Uh, however, it does it a bit differently. And that's my biggest issue with it. Now, this is the closest contender to the Linus Tech Tip screwdriver right here. This is literally the one he based it on. Um, Project Farm and the other, I'm trying to remember who else got it early to do comparisons. They had Mega Pro ones. Um, one was the newer design that kind of looks like this. But it is not this one, and the other one was the older design. Why this why this specific one is important, right? Is bam. It holds just as many bits as Linus Tech Tips does. See that? And this is so much better than that other DeWalt. And I, here I can show you. They're definitely copying this idea. Right? Watch this. But you see how it's just way more awkward? They tried copying that. And it's just a worse experience. I actually, to the point where you see I don't even have bits in it. Um, also, you kind of need the extension on here. And it is kind of, the extension looks like this. I just never use it because I use a generic extension. I may add this one to the running. Um, I may not. But it, like this ratchet mechanism here is actually pretty good, especially for extensions. But you can see where they got this design. Mega Pro has this patented. Like it comes out real nice and smooth. Right. And then when it goes, it just like goes, 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 goes. And it kind of sucks it in. And it's not, what baffles me 
that's not magnetic. The, this closing mechanism. I don't know what it is. Some patented design. Um, this specific one, this is going to be your... like If you like the LTT screwdriver but want to save a buck, this is really what you're looking at. This is 40 bucks, roughly. Uh, sometimes a little bit less. Sometimes a little bit more. Depending on where you get it from the US because uh, this is... Mega Pro is a Canadian brand. You can get it on Amazon. Well, this is like 85-90% of the last Tech Tip screwdriver. Uh, if you looked at the Snap-on or this DeWalt, though, if you notice, they get thinner and they have knurling. So this is, as it says here, the Automotive R edition. So this is where Linus did all this sort of tweaks. Um, is This is just the easiest way to manufacture this. Is a thick boy. What is going on? King Arthur, out of there. King Arthur, what are you doing? What are you doing? You butthead. Yeah, you're being a butthead. Oh, we got a cat doing cat things over there. Cats, you know? Um, what I was going to say when I was r so rudely interrupted. He's coming back. I can hear him. He was on the stream earlier if you guys missed him. Um, and look at there. You can, you can see Made in Canada. He's coming back. What are you doing over there, dude? Huh? What do you got? What if we get you cat toys? Oh, you took... What did you steal now? Here you go, guys. You know, he's got taste when he steals... Uh, plate mount cherry 60% stabilizers. These used to be super duper rare. These are like the pre-modified ones. No, they aren't. These are like the OG cherries that still have little feet. Uh, he stole those. He was playing with them. Hey, you. Yeah. What are you doing? You're a crazy guy. I know what you want. You want catnip? Here you go. All right, I'll show you why, guys. Part of the reason why I got the long, the long wire for this webcam. Most of it's so I can bring it over to PCs when I'm showing you building. But here you go. I gave him, give him catnip to distract him. King, how's the catnip? Oh, he's trying to rip the seam open. King Arthur. Yeah. If you guys have cats, get him the catnip banana. You want the Yao brand, the best one. If you can't find that, uh, I forget which one this is, but make sure it's like U.S. grown catnip. That's the good stuff. Hamlet used to rub it all over his face and everything. He, King just bites the living but Jesus out of it. He looks like it's gone through a war. Yeah. All right. Now that we've got the now that we've got the cat taken care of. All right. So you know this this design is fine um but you can definitely see where it's not like really pc optimized and i can see where especially linus using the the uh wobble this way on this one like in out which i would be interested to see if that's there on 
the last detective's one as well. I think there's actually more wobble in their shaft. Um, because they, like, there's so much less force here than the, than the snap-on. Now, there's not as little as this DeWalt. But this one's like, oh, it just feels disgusting. It feels like, ugh, a little toy compared to this or the snap-on. Um, so the reason why this one's important, though, and why I got this specific one, is because, if you look, it has the same, it has standard bits. So part of Linus's, Linus and Linus Tech Tips design is that they had to use shorter bits in their handle. If you can see though, this Mega Pro that the theirs is built, like they licensed this bit holder, which is, hey, after having this in hands, like this is crazy. Like, and like having now seen what the DeWalt is based on and how shit that works by comparison. Yeah, they definitely um, have something good here. Now here's something about this. You wanna turn to the right, you have to turn this to the left. You wanna turn, undo a screw, you have to turn the ratchet to the right. So that is like the first thing that Linus worked on was making that logical. You want to tighten it? Tighten. Tighten. Loosen. Loosen. It's it, This hurts my brain. Um, pop this open. You know, grab a Phillips 2. It's got the same um, thing here. Like the same grippy thing that the, the LTT screwdriver will have. The other cooler, cool thing that and this is something that uh, the, that other DeWalt kind of messed up on. And I can go and grab that one in a second here. But here, watch. You pull this out. You want to grab a specific bit? You just rotate it. And you grab it. Close it up. Pop it in there. You're good to go. Yet, this still spins. Far better than DeWalt does. See that? Um... how this DeWalt works is they kind of copied the design. However, pull this out, the, just the end cap spins. And it's much harder to spin the end cap than it is that entire mechanism. Like, I don't know if you can see just by me struggling, but this is much harder to open and close. Whereas this has this like plunger mechanism in here. And you can feel it, like, you can just hear that tick right there, and then it's much easier to go in. So, like, that, the mechanism here is beautiful. I can see why they went with it. The one thing I do not like about this Mega Pro, uh, you can see on a seam line here, this is still an over-molded rubber, but I can tell by this rubber. It is a much softer, more pliable rubber than the DeWalt. This, to me, even though it's over-molded, it feels much thinner of a rubber for the first thing, right? And I might be wrong. This might just be like you're greebling, like you're, they're making it look cool, not more durable. But it really does seem like it goes further into the plastic or the plastic over, like goes over it. Whereas here, it, it seems like the rubber goes over the plastic. That's going to peel off and come off, in my opinion, under heavy use. Um, it just feels squishier, too. And I don't need my rubber to be squishy. You know what I mean? So that's that's one thing I do worry about with the Mega Pro. Is that if you use it like... say, And this is a, a mechanic one. Automotive R. The R is what specifies these little bits. And that's why I got this one. Because this is the exact one that, that you know the LTG screwdriver is based off of. The one that the other guys had, both the older or the newer design, uses a single bit that's flippable. And it's non-magnetic. Whereas this, very obviously, is branded stainless steel. You're paying extra for that, too. And magnetic. You can get cheaper versions, not of this one, but of the lower-end Mega Pros that are not stainless um, and are cheaper. They're just like a black coated. Uh, and then, obviously, if they have the flippable bits, they're not magnetic. So this is the closest it gets. And you can see how close this is. Now, this is a pretty fat driver in the hand so i could see also why linus would want to slim that down this dewalt much smaller but remember six bits snap on much thinner uh it has six ish five you could fit way more in there because it's just a screw off you just keep jamming them in there 
Um, this is 12, and it's much thinner. Right? And it is the, it's also a tri-wing style design. Um, so, and I wonder if they had this one for, you know, like, checking on, because... I'm thinking that this, though it, it, it takes an extension in, to put the bits in. I wish I, I need to go find that thing, see if I still have it. I might have chucked it because I never use it. Uh, this is probably like idealistically wise, pretty close to what they're going for. Now it's like unrefined, you know. But uh, the, our third contender here, the Mega Pro Automotive R, which is about forty bucks. This is this is literally the precursor to the Linus Tech Tip screwdriver. Um. Very nice screwdriver. So if you want to save some money, want to be about half, this thing's super nice. If you're not annoyed by the, if I want to go forward, you turn it back. And then you can go forward. If you want to go back, you have to turn it forward, and then you can go back. That's closer to a standard ratchet. I just find it annoying for a screwdriver. To be truthful, I find it annoying for a ratchet, too. Now, here's one thing I don't necessarily like about the Mega Pro. This guy's going crazy over there if you hear clunking in the background that is that is the cat okay when you turn it it only turns that much and I, I personally would just like a little bit more turn to that if that makes sense like it, it's almost too little like see how you can just it has a nice like you know, like, thing. But it's, like, actually hard to do that. Like, you have to, like, pay attention. Because, like, normally you would be doing it like this. And you want to go backwards. You switch it. So that's where I would like a, a bigger ring, too. Because you could switch it with this part of your hand. Um... But it's actually like almost too little travel. So I wonder if that'll change. I know they had to change up the selector mechanism because they wanted the turn right to, to tighten, turn left to loosen. And, you know, obviously it's it's backwards here. But to be truthful, this, that's amazing. Like, and you're just like, oh, I need a uh, Torx T15. Bam. Now I, now I can work on Dells. Now I can work on Dell desktops. And you just fucking go at that shit. So this is this is like I never knew about Mega Pro prior to them talking about it. Um, maybe it's because they're a Canadian brand. Uh, I always rocked the like I said, I've had this thing for a long time. To be truthful, I'm not a big ratcheting screwdriver guy anymore. I have uh, these things called uh, electric screwdrivers. Yeah, um, use power. So. And realistically, for desktop computers, you need a Philips too, basically. Here's an older Snap-on from like 2008. Sounds like an RC car. That's what Screws calls it. Is. Sadly, like I really like this size. You don't have any speed control though. It's just on or off. Uh, newer ones that are slightly bigger. Uh, this is also NICAD originally. It's been converted to nickel metal hydride uh, when I refurbished it a bit. Um, but uh, Snap-on ones keep getting bigger than this. So that's why I actually had this one refurbished because it's super nice and tiny. Look at that thing. It was actually sold as like originally also as like a repair kit for like Hondas or Toyotas. Because it was like the only power tool that could get in that area or something. Which is kind of cool. You know, but I, I'm, I would, if I can use a power tool, I will, is basically what it is. Now, what I can tell you is super duper handy about something like this, especially I, I, having used this DeWalt, six bits is not enough. Um, I put a T15, T25, Phillips one, square two, and small and big flathead in here, and then I keep the Phillips two in it. That is you know, pretty close to what I need, you know what I mean, um, on a regular basis, this is much better, 
you just have way more options. Or you can load it out. Like it'd be nice to have certain Allen sizes in here, like a five mil Allen and a 2.5 mil Allen are really common for stuff I deal with, even with PCs. Um, so super duper interesting. Um, I can see where a lot of the Linus Tech Tips idea or like features came from because they really came from here. Um, this is very similar. So if you guys are looking to save a buck or something like that, this is about about forty bucks. Sometimes you can get cheaper, you know, in the thirty-eight dollar range. Sometimes it's forty-three dollars. Depends. Probably because it's coming out of Canada and you know the exchange rate fluctuates. Or you can find it on Amazon though. So. Um, but this mechanism back here, really nice. The ratchet feel, really good. So if they approved on that, crazy cool. The one thing I am gonna try though, uh, is I, I like Linus was saying you shouldn't use their bits on other screwdrivers. I really think you can. Because do you see how much this bit is sticking out here? So as long as they didn't, this butt part is this, uh, you know, like up to this ring is important. You guys can see that because that's where it locks in is that little like those little notches there so as long as it's at least that long you can stick it you should be able to stick his bits in any tool which would be nice because then you can get you know whatever bit you want uh one thing i will also be testing with the last tech tips one is something that he didn't show off like this has this ring in here but it's permanent theirs is like a little star ring that you can move so they're saying like oh yeah then you don't have to use our little bits you can use these bits I don't think that's the play, personally. What I think the real play is... Uh, if I can not knock this on the floor, please. It's fitting one of these in there. This is a power bit. Um, I believe this is a two inch. And you can kind of do that on this DeWalt. All right, so you can just pop this guy in. See, it doesn't exactly fit. It could. This is a standard two inch power bit. I would have designed this DeWalt to fit these. Because this takes extensions, well, that also means it takes a power bit directly. And sometimes that's very useful to have. So in here, theoretically, you could have fit like a power bit, which would have knocked two bits out. But if you use a Phillips two a lot, and you use that a lot, there's some retention issues, you know. But um, I would have designed it to be able to fit a power bit in the handle. I'm thinking Linus's, check this out. Theoretically, if I could if I could snap this in, that would fit. You guys see that? So that's what I'll be trying, because that would be super useful, because here, watch this. Now you have a little bit more reach. See that? So I think that might be worth worth the loss of two bits, especially because with PC building, the Philips 2 is like the de facto bit, you know? And just that, I feel like that extra reach in, in certain cases could be quite useful. And uh, for those wondering if these, they're like, Milwaukee bits don't look like that. Oh, they did at one point. These are recalled. I love them though. They're, they're carbide bits. The issue is, is they said they were impact rated and uh, these were actually designed specifically not for impacts. So what would happen is when you use an impact driver, they would just shear right off. Um, turns out though, when you use them in a screwdriver correctly, um, they basically never wear out because they're so hard. Um, so I bought like a contractor pack of them before they were like off eBay when they were being recalled um, before, you, you know, that actually happened. And I'll probably always have them. Yeah, so. Alright guys, well I am going to have to hit the hay here. So, glad you could check out some of the stuff. We got the new, the new knife that we opened up some of the stuff with. Um... We've got the keyboard stuff. Really pumped about that. Those keycaps have definitely kicked me in the butt on my SteelSeries 7G rebuild project. Um, I want to get that done ASAP to get those on there. Uh, I mean, I, I got to build my desktop first. But, um, you know, hopefully it won't be another X amount of years. 
uh, if you're wondering why that's a rebuild project, I used that thing for over four years, put different keycaps on it. Um, I ended up switching, got my Happy Hacking Keyboard Pro 2, used that. Then I got super, super deep in the keyboards. Around that time, a uh, close friend went off to college, lent it to him. Uh, let's just say it's had a lot of alcohol spilled on it. Does technically still function? Is there like more than a millimeter of crap built up um, on the plate? Yes. Yes, there is. So I will be... I'm desoldering all the switches. Those things are... Got brutalized. You know what I mean? Like, I used it for four years before I put new keycaps on it. Um, then it went off with him to college for four years. After I used it for about a year. So, you know, it, it got like eight plus years of usage. Um, I'm going to put new switches in it. Um, and uh, now it's got new keycaps too. And at some point while he was at college, the wrist rest got lost. I did find a replacement on eBay because that wrist rest is what got me into wrist rest. It's this very wide, nice slope. Brilliant thing. Um, give, I give props to Yvonne, uh, Linus's wife, every time she... You know, he or she mentions still using that thing, and she still rocks that thing, too. Um, the the buddy from college, actually, the reason why I got it back is because he just bought, ended up buying himself one eventually. You know, once you're out of college, have money, have a job, etc. Um, but it was just a solid keyboard because that thing was... Uh, Coast... Not Coastar. Um... It was one of the brands that does cherry natively. Um, Cause CoStar was Philco. Would have been the same brand that does Leopold, I believe. Like the OEM. But, uh, cause I don't think that was a CoStar. No. I'm trying to remember, but like the, the, either way, the build quality on the 7G is like overkill. Yeah, six like six G V two. Thing was the six if you're running the six G V two was just the seven G without the USB hub and without the wrist rest. Same keyboard otherwise. Um super nice board. I actually rebuilt the six G the first keyboard I ever had with the Ergo Clears was the six G V two, I believe. So I wanna bring that thing back because I want like for troubleshooting I want a PS two keyboard. I currently use the WASD v2 um because that can run as ps2 um and it's just better for troubleshooting to have that uh for trying to boot to things etc but yeah the the 7g had horrible keycaps but hey that's what got me into keyboard building so i'm glad to finally have those those traders keycaps on there they're gonna look amazing um somehow of all the things i sold i never sold my full-size keyboard cover acrylic cover from elite keyboards if you know who they are they're like the og of top ray and real force uh they're the og of clacks you know that's where they used to be sold um so i have the the still have the full-size acrylic cover so i'll be able to protect these keycaps you know because it is on the repair computer down here which that computer can either go from being used a shit ton while i'm troubleshooting stuff to not being turned on for three weeks um so what would happen is the like the the wasdy keyboard was getting pretty grimy um just from you know you got dust in the house we got cats you know so it'd be nice to put that on there protect those those fancy fancy pants traders keycaps um and uh yeah so i'm pretty pumped about that got oh, this knife like i said i've been wanting to order this thing for over a year it looks like a steak knife like look at that and actually there are a bunch of people commenting like they they always bring this one to like grill outs and cooking and so like cause a lot of times they'll give you like plastic silver and stuff um and they bring this along because it is it's essentially like a steak knife um so they bring it like any like yeah anytime i go eat steak i bring this one along and i'm like classy um but yeah so gonna gonna you know it, that's another thing with these mechanical keyboards i have ones 
And what's pro- the switches that are probably going in there, and people think I'm crazy. I'm probably going with older switches than are what are currently on the Steel Series 7G. I'll keep the ones that are in there. Um, the one thing that they it's kind of can't really reuse them all that easily because they're so meticulous about holding this shit together that each one of the pins is bent. So, like, it's pushed through and then they're bent flat on the corners. So, like, not only is it soldered together, like, they mechanically held it together via the bending the pins on the switches before soldering it together. So you need to solder it. Then there's still a little solder bent under that bent pin. So you heat it up and you bend it back up. Um, I basically have to sacrifice a desoldering iron tip in order to do it because it's going to wreck the tip doing that a hundred times. Um, some of them have already done, but uh, I'm basically going to sacrifice a tip to do that easily without hating myself. Um, worth it. But, so putting them back on, I've done it before, pain in the ass. You gotta, you gotta straighten them all with the pliers before you start soldering it back on. I'm just gonna use new bottoms. Um, and I actually have, for the switches, I have one wise terminal keyboard left. Why, you know, like, wise terminal keyboard? Those use um, vintage, vintage blacks. So, and I really feel like the... The Steel Series, I have always believed blacks are the best intermediate switch. Um, fight me, reds are dumb. Um, and so I want to, I want to maintain that it's blacks. Um, the guy that had gotten that and then got the six G V two, um, and seven G, and then his seven G something happened to it later got a six G V two, but he had blacks every time. Blacks are just an amazing starting switch. Um, so it's going to go back to vintage blacks. I'm just debating what I do for the housing. Because um, it can't be backlit. Because that wasn't a thing on that board. Um, do I still use clear housings though? Or do I... I probably... I have tons of keyboard stuff still around here. I could just go back OG... Um, OG housings. You know, OG cherry black housings. So... But yeah. Uh... May or may not O-ring it. I still have some original black O-rings. Um, and what I mean by original is Wazd Keyboards did like his first run. This is before he got the, I think it's EDPM material. Um, so they're like a black silicon or no, nitrile. I want to say nitrile rubber. This is what we were doing like test runs of it. Um, and I still have a black set. And that was the set that was on there, you know, back when I was running pbt engraved keycaps so i think those should go back on there for like the you know, original vibes you know so i like i like keeping stuff classic if i can but uh i will say the engraved keycaps not the best like, like they lasted we used them for a long time um friend had it he used them for a long time it's just they're they're and i did get them in orange like i managed actually black keycaps all engraved and i managed wazd arrow keys escape in orange and then you might know from the 6g v2 the enters weird you can actually put a normal enter on there um delete might on the 6g v2 be full size i think shifts short on the 7g the delete is split so i actually managed to get logos in 2008 or 9 i want to say uh with the steel series logo on them so I actually have those still. That's where I'm going to have to use some of those additional four keys from the 108 key, not a 104 key set, to replace those. Um, I won't be able to use the backspace, but I think it'll vibe. Um, but yeah, that 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 Trader's Key set really brought me back to getting that keyboard. Because I'm like, I, I, what, I want a full-size key set. This thing looks amazing. What? Like, it's over-top amazing, kind of. What, what can I put it on, though? I don't have full-size boards. I'm like, oh, I have one. So I'm probably going to pull apart that Wise terminal, get those get those switches out of there for the better... Because like, those stems actually use a different formulation of plastic. Um, also, they were used a shit ton, so they're super smooth. Super duper 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 smooth. Um, get some vintage blacks in there. Um, and, uh, you know, just kind of refurb it. I'm probably going to scrape that PCB off because, like I said, there's like a millimeter or two of just alcohol, sugar, snacks. Like, he, he, he literally, when he handed it back to me and we took it apart, he's like, you just want me to buy you a new one? 
<laughs> That's how bad it was. And I'm like, no, no, no. This is like my original. I, I, I mean, I had used Model M's and stuff before that, but I didn't own any ever. This was my my personal original mechanical keyboard. We got to keep this thing. Got to keep it going. Got to keep it going. You know. So hopefully that'll be a project once my once my desktop's done. Um, you know, got oh yeah, you got tons of projects around here always. But uh, yeah, so. Well, guys, it's been fun. It's quite early now. <laughs> and hopefully uh, we'll see you next stream. Uh, we'll be streaming on uh, the Prophecist from now on. Everything is going to get posted here. If it's... Well, we just did a whole bunch tonight. We did knives. We did keyboards. Uh, we did... No, we didn't do any pens. We did music. Japanese importing. Uh, technology with the charger. We did screwdrivers. That, that's my channel right there. You know? I say I'm an everything, an everything enthusiast. Uh, the new thing that I've thought up is... Uh, it came to my mind on a drive home. But the prophecist, and I'm going to professional enthusiast. I think that really rings well. Or goes together well. You know, with a proper period at the end. Um, that's what i got to change my description to over on Twitter. Is just the prophecist and then professional enthusiast period. And then we can put you know, links to the channel or whatever. But, uh, yeah. Um, we're just going to have everything here. So, you know, follow over on YouTube. Follow on Twitch. Um, for live streams, video content. We actually have a bunch shot already. Just Some of it's even already edited. It might be slow until my main desktop is done. I literally have off end of October work I took. I use some vacation to make sure that gets done. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not getting uh, Ryzen 7000. It's Ryzen 5000. Because uh, I had all the hardware already. Um, that ended up, I had to buy a CPU. And I literally had the rest of the computer build. So I'm not spending money I don't need to. Um, especially because the X3D parts for 7000 aren't out yet. And those are going to be, if you think Ryzen, the 5800X3D is good. And, you know, the... 7950x is good imagine just taking those things and having a baby you know that's what i would wait for if you have anything decent right now um but uh yeah hopefully we'll be doing this again soon uh don't know when mooski's gonna be able to do it he's back in class um getting it getting those degrees you know so uh we'll hook up with him when we can um some point here i need to do some pokemon pulls we just ended up doing all sorts of random stuff tonight and uh oh i am starting a new kind of series um where i drew well, when i drive home from work i'm just throwing the camera up on the phone um and just kind of talking on various topics if you guys have topics for that hit me up over on the social media it's just at the prophecist like the channel um give me ideas on you know if there's any topics you want me to talk about that you're interested in uh, i got about a half hour every day unless i'm got to do something else or drive someplace else um the drive home is boring and that kills time and it's a good way to get you guys information you're looking for so have a good one have a good night throw me a follow if you can or subscribe and have a good one peace